scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I thought of recent at the faithfulness of God over my life and over this ministry and um, I've had to fight tears because of the overwhelming blessings of God. I receive text messages every day. Our lines are jammed every day. People calling from around the world, expressing their gratitude for what the word of God in and through this ministry is doing in their lives. The miracles, the signs, the wonders, um, you have to be evil to pretend like the things that are said don't matter. The, the, the level, I mean, quite frankly, let me tell you sincerely, we don't get to hear up to one-tenth of the transforming stories that happen in the lives of people. What, what we receive here on Friday is, is just a token because we are constrained by time and then because not everybody who would want to share is available here and um, I really really am touched and then to know how how easy God has made this thing particularly for me I am deeply indebted to him you see let me tell you this when when you honestly sit down and talk with a man of God who fears and loves God, he may end up crying because of the pain. It's a difficult thing to head a ministry, to run a ministry, to mentor and to teach people. There's no guarantee anywhere that they will be changed. There is no guarantee that they will even listen to you. And so when people give you their attention and commit their lives, it's much more than they are liking you. There is a grace. There is an anointing. Are we together? I am, I am very, very touched. The workers in this ministry who have made my job easy. You don't see me running around here to verify what are they doing. And I acknowledge, I talk with pastors. I have colleagues in ministry. I have senior colleagues, fathers, mentors. And I know how difficult. They will tell you. It's easy to preach. But the system to make your message heard and understood is very difficult. Are we together now? And I don't want to take lightly and take for granted um, what the Lord is doing in this ministry and through my life. And um, I honestly want to appreciate everyone. I more so want to acknowledge and appreciate everyone. Listen carefully, and I'm saying this sincerely everyone who is genuinely part of this vision you know i hope you know that no one is obligated to believe in you are you aware of that that there is no yoke on anybody to believe whatever you said god told you it's a difficult thing to be trusted to be believed in enough for people to commit their loyalty and their lives if God is not ashamed to declare his vulnerability to men then no man of God should every time I come down from the car and I see people here 
despite the weather despite you see some sitting in the grass hanging around there are people inconveniencing themselves right now from around the world listening do they have to do this am i the only man of god and and uh, you know the most touching part of it is when people go out of their way to travel from other cities some of you are seated here now all through the week people have come from within the country from outside the country inconvenience themselves you don't want to know the sacrifice that people make week in week out some of them are men of god too they have their own ego they have their own pedigree and they drop that thing aside to come and sit down to listen to be blessed to be mentored please if god ever gives you influence value it is god helping somebody tonight if god ever makes men to say i will follow you as you follow christ value it these are the things that when i see sometimes i'm so moved i'm so touched sometimes you see me just sit there and um i just say lord thank you you don't have to do this many men of god do not have the privilege of being loved across all regions usually there is one region that loves you and then another region that persecutes you harshly with a level of hatred that can almost neutralize the love that you have but god has made this different in my life and this ministry there is no region i have gone to that i'm not genuinely loved it's not normal i go to the east and i'm greatly loved i go to the west the south here the middle belt in fact the bible you know the bible says a prophet has is not without honor except in his hometown but the case is very different here i am deeply loved even within this place and i truly 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 value it hallelujah there are very few men of god and i tell you this very few men of god who operate in the level and the dimension of the gift of the spirit and a ministry like this who are not openly persecuted you don't work in there is a level of the spirit that if you walk above just get set to be in in everybody's negative book you see that but of course not everybody will love you and believe in you but let's be honest let's be honest even those who probably if at all talk against me they don't really hate me some are just ignorant or maybe intimidated or maybe frustrated there are few people who are honestly truly speaking you say i mean i hate this person and i i want us to 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 understand this i want you to know that i value and appreciate everyone i really do you know men of god we are proud people and most times we act as if with or without the members um, we are all right it's not true it's not true it's just a psychological way of trying to let the members not take advantage of us but i cannot come here and speak to cheers no matter how anointed i am you are the seal of my apostleship it's 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 it's, it's really thank you thank you very much you truly are it's amazing only God knows but how many battles I would have fought that some of you fought it and won and kept quiet. Are we together? I saw that grace in Billy Graham. The grace that makes a man accepted in every region. The only man of God that preached in North Korea. I saw that same grace in Reinhard Bonke. It was one of the things that took me to Joss to passionately. I, I don't want to carry the truth and have to be explaining to everybody. Do you know how painful it is to be misunderstood? There is a grace. There are spirits that are responsible for misunderstanding a man and an anointing. Did you know something as little as this? Just this. Someone alone can say this is occultic power. This is demonic this. It, there is a spirit that blinds the eyes of people so that no your good is evil spoken of are we together 
you can sow a seed to someone they'll say you are trying to bribe the family are you not seeing am i the only ones there are people that have the, they are sincere but never believed they bless you they are persecuted for blessing you they heal the sick and pay the price they open a branch and pay the price it takes grace to be loved not good intention my parents were right when they named me the way to love they saw very far so when people love you i have been moved the last few weeks look at the concert we held it you mean that rain and i saw many of you jumping up and down and rejoicing no it's a grace it's a grace the race is not to the swift there are very anointed men of god that someone would prefer to listen to the tape than to come and sit down physically so why do i have to travel that far and leave all the men of god in my city to come and sit down you know someone was talking to me and said apostle i think you spend too much time seeing people after service you go home past 12 it's not fair and i said oh dear i know how constraining it is for me sometimes i'm coming from another meeting but this is the least i can do to these dear people some of them come from as early as 12 and they sit they pray for me they sow into my life how busy can i get what else will i be doing It's true. I will cancel any meeting a thousand times to make sure you are trained, you are built, you are mentored. I rather fail, sincerely speaking. God, you are spiritual people. I'm not a politician. I rather fail so that you will succeed. Because if you succeed by me failing, then I succeeded. It's true. There is nobody, let me tell you, that I don't believe in. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help my heart to receive. Help my heart to be open. You are being trained and mentored to become something. You may not look like it now, but brothers and sisters, you just follow with humility. It may take time. You may compare your life with others and it may look as if you are slow. You just follow and let time tell where God is taking you to. Please pray. Lord, the grace to listen. Yes, I know I'm a man of God. I know I have revelation. I know I have anointing. But Lord, the grace to listen. The grace to see beyond a man. Lord, I receive grace to be committed. I reject every suggestion by Satan to alienate me from what you are doing in this season. Lord, I know that you are calling me to an extraordinary ministry. There is a reason why you have planted me here. There is a reason why you are equipping me. I may not have all the money that I need now. Others may seem to have gone ahead of me, but like Jesus walking on water, I know you are taking me some. He lead me and guide me to the city of love he lead me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of love
this admonishment and then we'll get straight to the word just one prayer Lord may I never go ahead of you in the blueprint of destiny may I never let men push me out of my season in the name of rushing to look for results you're a man of God here pray that prayer twice Lord may I may I resist the pressure of premature manifestation may I resist the pressure of pride and arrogance your life may look slower than the normal pace but when God is done with you you will find out that what you would have been doing has already been done in your obedience lift your voice and pray it's a costly thing to go ahead of God it's a costly thing to preach ahead of God is a costly thing to move ahead of God the Bible says with God not before God with God when you walk with him there's an old hymn that says when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word not when we go ahead of him men will force you to move ahead of seasons in your life they will make you do things God is not saying they will pressure you to open doors God is not opening and destroy you and laugh at you when you fall but happy is the man that can sustain the stamina to walk at God's pace please pray Lord the grace hallelujah I remember years ago a particular friend a pastor friend then he met me then Koinonia had not started we just used to hold the weekly programs then on campus and he met me one day and said man of God you need to go for TV ministry the level of your anointing even some bishops don't have that's supposed to be a good advice the same advice of peter jesus don't die you are too innocent to go to the cross and that advice looked like a nice advice and they just felt you are on that please write books do this do that and every time i went to the lord the lord made me know that son it is within my power to make you anything so if i don't is because there is a time appointed people told me why don't start a church do something do this do that start tv ministry buy a car buy this buy that you see let me tell you the steps of a spiritual man is very strange a spiritual man is not a natural man don't sit down you how you know you are spiritual is the pathway of your life is meticulously guarded by the will of God others can go the way they want but God says remember anytime I look at you there is a nation in you so they can you it is your obedience that will correct their mistakes they can go but you can't just go like them there are some of you you started your spiritual work with the same level with many others that have churches and branches today and sometimes they may look at you and say man of god you are the one who mentored us and god says sit down i know what i'm doing with you because when i'm done with you there are certain kinds of graces and mantles that must come and god says sit down are we together please i want you to listen men will mock you they will misunderstand you there is nothing unusual we just are not students of history that's why this thing surprises us go and read the bible any great vision is fought by hell you see why your life is fought by hell the devil will fight you tooth and nail because he would rather you die in your death is the death of a generation so he will rather you die instead of killing the generation one by one he says kill Moses instead of killing 
the entire earth human race killed Jesus let me tell you this this is a sensitive season in the spirit Satan is not looking for everybody there are people he will pass looking for others your, your, your destiny if the devil ever stops to consider you there's something he's seeing it's not just I will live long I will live old no there are people here listen to me Satan stopped attacking your family and turned to you because he found out out of everything he searched he found out if I can destroy her prayer life if I can destroy the anointing that I'm seeing this man of God is surely a prophet of God he does not even know it but if I can kill that grace then there is no need fighting 120 people there is no need of fighting a Decapolis if it can make one man mad and so because of that listen the devil will fight you you may want to get up and come for koinonia and the devil relax now can't you get the tape afterwards it's an attack it's an attack people will mock you sometimes and say you have been going to church what is it to show for your life no job no house everybody is moving forward and they are leaving you and you feel stupid for staying with God this my God ah. he is my God and his name is Yahweh your name is Yahweh and the poor to you God is giving you something that you will never be ashamed of it's not something you will use for 10 years and need another thing no there are see listen you can get a degree you can get a master's you can get a PhD and life will evolve such that what you studied may no longer be useful it is possible you can start a business and your product life evolves such that your product is no longer needed like a typewriter are we together every other thing in life needs constant evolution but when you know him when you find him when he anoints you my brother you stay through any time there is no mortal man who can edge you out of the systems of God they can believe you are gone God will show them you are still there listen years ago when God was training me I remember one of the things that God told me he said son take your eyes away from the vanities of men the flamboyancy of ministry you just stay with me let me teach you there are many things I would later learn in my life I didn't know that was what the Holy Spirit was teaching me the Holy Spirit is a priceless asset don't mind the ignorant people that make it look like it doesn't pay to follow him you will look stupid while you follow him but when he's done with you he will bring beauty and glory they will look at you and your life will be Beulah and Hephzibah you can do ministry the way you want to do you can believe you have all the revelation you need and all the anointing you just start going on the way you will see what dimensions of the kingdom you have ignored and the price you will have to pay and the price you will make others pay for not paying attention 
it's not enough to be called it's not enough to feel trained it's not enough to feel ready you must be approved of God our level of carnality in this generation is becoming very serious we ignore the voice of God we just want to do things and get up and do it no respect for the timing of God no respect for spiritual things listen listen we live by common sense we run by principles but we fly by instructions are, are you getting what i'm saying when you want to walk in life one step you can use brain work brain work is how many people want to achieve their destiny the time in your life is too short to use brain work to be great then you use principles to run but if it is flight you will have to work on instructions those who teach pilots are not called teachers they are not called lecturers they are not called advisors they are called instructors please sit down let's go to the word i just i just thought to to just allow the holy spirit talk to us You know, when, when people see the anointing of the Spirit upon my life, many people believe it's just luck. I was just fortunate to be anointed. Or, I was just called and ordained to be anointed. Or, I was just fortunate to meet anointed people. And God anointed me. You really believe that? There are people who know nothing about the anointing. But then they will tell you, don't mind all these people. And yet you don't, we see, wisdom is justified by her children. Brothers and sisters, it is God that is the confirmer of everything. If God is not confirming something in your life, then listen to the person he's confirming something in his life. Are we together? One of the most dangerous things that can happen to a man is pride. You, you keep hearing me say this thing all the time. Pride is not just wrong. It truly is evil. You will watch yourself entering a pit and going down per second per second. Yet pride will make you believe you are in control. You are in charge. I am very open. To want to know the areas in my life where I am ignorant. Because if I don't pay attention to them, that would be the advantage of Satan in my life. So I like to know, what don't I know? Thank God for the one I know, but what don't I know? I'm, I'm like a spiritual archaeologist. I don't want God to be this way and I'm there jumping. What else am I doing? Because I've learned through experience that the secret to a man's relevance, not his making heaven, his relevance is to be where God is. You can make heaven whether you are where God is or not. I just want to be where you are. You know that song? Dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from afar I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence, that's where I always want. someone here God is saying be careful I want to announce you greater than you want to announce yourself but just be patient 
others may announce themselves and say look I am sent of God my father is a priest we are the sons of Skiva and the demons say no we don't know you but God can look at you and say I'm announcing this my daughter I'm announcing this my son it may cost you some momentary inconvenience don't mind it which woman loses her baby just because of birth pains in spite of the fact that the baby she's carrying a child and is inconveniencing she may be tired and almost want to give up but she knows that very soon and when that woman's delivery time is come she may go through all kinds of constraints but when that child comes people who were not supposed to come and visit will find their way and they will not just come alone they will come with gifts don't invite people into your life when the child is not born nobody comes to greet you when you are pregnant if you can stay through when the child comes then you deserve every gift the wise men were around but they never came to Mary it was after Jesus was born the Magi they came the Bible says they brought they came and bowed down before a baby not before Mary or Joseph they bowed down before a baby and brought gifts of, of gold of frankincense and man when you stay with God and birth what he's putting and you see God doesn't do nine months pregnancy the pregnancy depends on many things you can carry a child for five years the first child can be delivered in four months and then the second child in seven years this is God for you are we together the first child can just be something that is very simple in the spirit but the second child can be the core of your anointing you will stay there someone can have seven births of spiritual reality and you stay with one forever as if it's cause but when that child comes you will find out that all those seven will need that one child to be able to live that's why you had to stay that long when they looked at the womb of her with child they said there are two nations not two babies two nations hallelujah so pay attention you are not just here to receive tea and bread you don't need to put yourself under this kind of constraint if all you need in life is tea and bread what God is giving you in this place is more than tea and bread it's more than just a successful life as important as it is it's more than just prosperity in as much as we know prosperity it's more than just influence God is giving you something that cannot be bought in any market on earth he's putting something in your life that makes it impossible for some of you what you are receiving is the remedy for these complexes and all this inferiority that our families have put in us for when you have something that only God can provide then men must look for you that's what he's giving you are planning to save to buy a house he's giving you what will make house owners come to you and say can I have the privilege of having you in my estate God is showing you a more excellent approach to life it looks strange because it's not a mainstream approach to life but you walk with God and see a time will come you will turn back and not have needs again and you say Lord what did he do I say it's a more excellent way you follow the way men men follow to be established to live their lives you are going to leave God somewhere in your equation especially in our generation you must leave God somewhere but when he guides you when he leads you ah. hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord pray in the spirit for one minute and say Lord open my eyes through your word tonight blessed be the name of Jesus hallelujah tonight I'm preaching a message I titled spiritual stability please listen to this message It's a powerful message and it will bless you spiritual stability three scriptures first Corinthians 15 
and verse 58 spiritual stability I didn't have any divine revelation for this message but the message has come as a response to a need that I've seen in the body of Christ that we need to explore the keys that are responsible for being grounded and being established in spiritual things are we together the teaching is an attempt to address the vacillations that we continually experience in our work with God based on a number of factors that we are going to be discussing that a believer can not only grow but can become stable are we together yes so it's, it's, it's an attempt to explore the keys to a grounded and productive Christian life it matters to you and matters to God that your Christian life be grounded and productive the Bible declares once and again that hearing is our father glorified he says when we bear much fruit he says that we produce fruit and that our fruits abide are we together three scriptures very quickly follow me tonight I hope we are able to finish it tonight therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable then it says always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord Paul is speaking here to the church in Corinth and he's telling believers that they be steadfast and then unmovable unshakable unbendable so it is possible that a man can be stable in his Christian experience Ephesians chapter 4 please and verse 14 the Bible speaking about the fivefold ministry it says that we henceforth the matured ones the ones who have been built now by the gifts that the that, that, that God has supplied the body that we henceforth be no more what please talk to me children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive so there is a level of spiritual stability that a believer can get he can attain unto a realm and a level in his work with God where you are unbendable where you you are so fortified that deception becomes an impossible experience for you it is possible one more scripture and then we we'll begin to teach Colossians chapter 2 please we'll read from verse 6 to 8 Colossians chapter 2 it says as ye therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him we're reading to verse 8 7 it says rooted read with me rooted and built up in him stop there notice it didn't just say built up rooted and then built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving verse 8 beware so you are not just being aware just by an information something you are doing in verse 7 is what will sustain this lest any man spoil you these are the various ways that men can be made to vacillate spiritually ready through number one is what please talk to me philosophy and then vain deceit and then the traditions of men and then the redoments another word there is the patterns the modus operandi the system of operation of this world and not after Christ it is possible that a man can live his life manifesting the knowledge that just comes through philosophy 
and then vain deceit and then the tradition of men and then the redoments of this world you can believe this today and then tradition tells you no things are done this way and then you readjust your life to suit tradition are we together and while you are trying to gain stability through tradition all of a sudden the rudiments of this world these are the things that destroy us they say this is how they do it in life you don't even know who puts that room no this is how they do it this is how they do this. This is how parenting happens. This is how marriage happens. This is how prosperity happens. This is how ministry is done. The Bible says beware. Prophesy to yourself. Say beware. He said less any man. So who are the men? Who are the people? The vessels that the devil uses. They are not just angels. They are men. Let any man spoil you. The word spoil you there doesn't mean corrupt. The word spoil you means to plunder. To steal from you. Like an asset. Something of treasure has been given to you. And then a man comes to spoil you. Like you come and rob a man. And carry everything that is treasurable. He said beware. That means you are possessing something. That has potential. Something of worth. But beware. Lest men come. Sometimes innocently. But they are in the similitude of robbers. They can spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. And the tradition of men. And the redoments. This is the one that even disturbs me the most. The redoments of this world. This is how it is done. It's amazing how many people's destinies have been wrong perpetually. They, one of the ways that people have become failures in life is by aligning to a tradition and a pattern that has been obeyed for a long time but is wrong. Just because someone did something and kept doing it, kept doing it for decades, they can tell you this is it. In this family, nobody really, you, all this your Jesus thing. We love Jesus. And you, the person who is talking is not very serious with God. And he's marketing his template of spirituality to you. And every time you show any unusual passion, they say, see, we did this thing and left it. The rudiments of this world. And people even turn scriptures in the Bible and say, see, the Bible even said, don't be over, uh, over righteous, over spiritual. And the person who is sharing that thing doesn't love the word of God. He just found a scripture that will give him a basis for laxity and unseriousness. A man can be stable spiritually. As a man of God, it's important to realize that you are mentoring and building people based on the truth you are convicted about. Let me tell you this. Not everybody can receive the correction that you propose after receiving your error. Not everybody will be alive and within your reach. Are we together? If I teach you, come. If I teach you something erroneous now, and 10 years down the line, this brother goes abroad and he's in the US. He has institutionalized that error and he's paying the price. Life is whipping him for it. And I later go and find the truth. And I say, people, sorry. What I said 10 years ago is a mistake. This guy may never live to hear it he will still be carrying the mindset of me of 10 years ago and even when god is telling him adjust he said no way apostle said this that's why it is important that men of god we become the first guinea pigs to our revelations before propose it's not just anything you hear on tape and anything you feel is nice or anything by a man of god you love and respect you just ship and just spill everything to your people when people are loyal to you, that means they have come to a point where either through a track record or a divine revelation, they have come to accept your word as the word of God over their lives. So they have opened up their spirits that any communication that comes from this man of God should be received subconsciously. They have come to a point where they, they, have, they have found comfort in following you as you follow after Christ. And you have a responsibility to probe and vet every revelation that is communicated to make sure it is worthy of giving to a generation not just members beware thank you lest any man spoil you are we together through philosophy vain deceit traditions of men and the rudiments of this world and not after christ it's amazing 
how you see people believe this today and they don't believe this tomorrow today i believe deliverance tomorrow i don't believe deliverance today i believe prosperity then i read one book by somebody i respect and all of a sudden i hate money next tomorrow i believe the gifts of the spirit the day after i believe common sense next tomorrow i believe divine direction the next ah, ah. no those those vacillations are very very dangerous you must be established to know that you can look at your children and say children before you were born this was what i stood for and even now as i am old i'm standing for this i called god a faithful god when i was 18 i am 85 he's still a faithful god i have not created another wrong name based on an experience that's the goal of this teaching and i'm going to share with you three keys that the lord or four that god has put in my heart keys that will create stability in your christian life because you see the internet social media um christian channels and all kinds of spiritual platforms right now on one hand they have benefited the body of christ but on another hand they have created gross confusion there are many people you have heard people you love and respect say things that have almost rattled the foundation of your convictions it's easy to resent somebody you don't believe but what happens when you hear someone who you love so much is saying and doing and standing for things that now makes you confused and so i must share with you otherwise we are going to be in serious trouble especially as a man of god here there is no guarantee that the person you look up to will continue to stand straight so in as much as you look up to people it's important to create a system are we together otherwise we are going to be in trouble you follow men as they follow christ not just as they go before you you follow men as they follow christ meaning that the day you don't see christ before them you are permitted to live it this is this is this in itself this thing i just said in itself can bring me a lot of trouble because sometimes we men of god teach people that trying to probe whether you are still following christ as they follow you can draw a cost to their life and even when people have long left the things of god they still demand loyalty from people no you follow a man of god as he follows christ if you're with me say amen. amen the first key that you need to have stability in your christian experience and please i don't want you to forget this the first key is an experiential revelation of god write it down an experiential revelation of god i can spend the whole night talking here if 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 we're unable to to exhaust this within the time we have then we can just have part two of it an experiential revelation of God look up please there is the experience of the kingdom John chapter 3 when you read um, from verse from verse 1 down to 3 let's let's go to verse 3 but Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says to him rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God he says he says for no man can do these things except God be with him and then verse 3 John ah okay keep verse 3 Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom take note of the word see verse 4 Nicodemus now says, can a man be born when he's old, you know, can he enter into his mother's womb the second time? And then verse 5, Jesus clarifies and says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, then he changes his terminology. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. He's talking about two related but different experiences there to see the kingdom and to enter the kingdom there is an experience of god listen very carefully there is an experience there is the knowledge of god a theoretical knowledge which is not wrong in itself are we together but there is the experience the experience of god the bible says oh taste and see not just hear and believe 
there is a place you hear but there is a place you can taste you can see your sensory perceptions can participate in your knowing God brothers and sisters the times that we are living in will require you knowing a God that you have an experience over it's good to know Joshua Selman's God it's good to know this and that man of God's God but you must come to a point where you glean from their own experience and then create a road map through it until he becomes your God are we together the experiential revelation of God the Bible says and the people that do know their God not the people that do hear that there is a God the heathens heard already about the God of the Hebrews but they did not know him let, let me tell you this your life will be at the mercy of your experiential revelation of who God is to you and there are three ways that God is revealed experientially. In fact, I think there's a message that I preached some years, knowing God experientially. You can get that message. It will bless you in no small way. But three major ways. Ready? Number one. The first way to have an experiential revelation of God is through his word, the written word. 1 Samuel 3.21. 1 Samuel 3.21. God can give men encounters through his word. I told you that the word of God, the logos, are we together? Just keep the scripture there. But make reference quickly on your notes to John 1 verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The Greek word there is logos. The logos of God, the thoughts of God. A compendium of his character, his methodology. Encapsulated in a material. So that as you study that material, you not only cram scripture, but it expands your spiritual horizon to understand how God behaves. The logos. A man can experience God through his word. The Bible says, and the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. So God can use his word to reveal himself. You can know his character based on his word. I know Sam. Come Sam. I know Sam, I've worked with Sam for many years. He's an amazing gentleman and I love him very much. Because I have interacted with him very much. Are we together? There is something that someone can come and meet me now and say, Apostle, Sam said I should tell you A, B, C. I will make reference to the track record of my working with him. Are we together? And know whether Sam can say this or not. I would rather be wrong and say sorry to that person but as far as that information is concerned I can throw it away are you getting what I'm saying so the Word of God is a revelation um, one of our dear media ladies I, I, I was during my birthday she has a blog page and a wonderful blog page by the way you can you honestly would want to just go to her blog page very rich wonderful materials and that lady i can't even remember the name of the blog page it was it was shown me and i went through it and she wrote certain quotes or certain things that that i say that has inspired i didn't even know that i've stressed those points that much to become a quote are we together now if one young man gets up and say i know apostle Apostle is my spiritual father, Apostle is my this, my apostle is my mother, is my uncle, is my sister, and says all those kinds of things. And they say two quotes from him, and he just says one kind of thing. He said, No, it's Miles Muro that said this one now. It's not. <laughs> Are you seeing that now? Automatically, you know that this guy is a liar. If someone says, I attend Koinonia every time, there are a few tests very few litmus tests i mean you don't need to you can't fake it just there are very few things anybody at all even if you are not a faithful member there are just certain things you can know that no it's a lie someone attends koinonia hear someone shouting and say what's happening say, ah i thought you said you attend this you are not something is betraying you somewhere so the logos of god thank you sam the word of god was not just given for us to cry is a compendium of his way of behavior through different dispensations so that as we study we have the mind of Christ are we together we have an understanding of the way he behaves so the Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by the word number two 
the way remember we're still on point one now i hope i hope i'm not confusing you you can call it point a through his word b the second way experiential revelation of god is given to the saints now pay attention is through the family of believers your interaction with the family of believers what the bible calls the household of faith many people do not know that your interaction with a kingdom community of believers can help you experience god mm. the family of true believers the household of faith is one of the platforms that god designed for men to encounter him experientially a number of scriptures acts chapter 2 please we'll read 42 to 47 acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 42 to 47 and they continued steadfastly listen carefully who are the day the community of believers is that true the bible says steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and what talk to me and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers we're reading to 47 43 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles 44 and all that believed were what all that believed were not apart there was a community system so this issue of kingdom community i have i have proposed again and again that the keys to maintaining kingdom values one of the keys is to create a community of believers no believer can truly become matured in the spirit in isolation you must be grafted to a family of faith that is territorial are we together and all that believed were together and had all things in common 45 they sold their possession and their goods and parted them all uh, to all men uh, you know as everyone had a need 46 and they listen continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from what house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart what was the result 47 praising god the bible says and having favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily as should be saved that means god was supporting that community life saying you are getting it right everywhere there is a community of believers that is a platform that was created by god to see that believers rise continue to grow the benefit they get is god's support by adding daily not weekly not monthly not per fellowship daily they were praising god having favor with all the people the lord added to the church he calls them the church daily such as should be saved the family of faith galatians 6 verse 10 where we get the word household of faith very powerful scripture then give us hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 i'm giving you scriptures like this because i want to support what i'm teaching intelligently there are all kinds of people we minister to people from different nations now if let me teach you this this is a place for mentorship so we believe in excellence but i want you to learn the motivation behind the things that i do you see when you begin to mentor people who come from different geographic and cultural context i can talk to all of you without bringing one scripture because there is a track record of your understanding my pattern of teaching are we together you know that every time i speak i will support it but maybe in france or the u.s or somewhere someone right now who may be heathenistic is listening and just has a bible or an unbeliever a muslim who just gave his life to christ so you will need to support these points they may look basic to you oh one point is enough apostle i'm convinced but i'm not just talking to you alone when you begin to minister at a global level you must have the patience and the simplicity to carry the larger crowd of people along otherwise a time will come your doctrine will only be understood by those who are close to you and that is because of the track record you have created 
Are you getting this now? So, Galatians 6 verse 10. It says, as we therefore, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to how many men? All men. But it says, let your focus be on a community of believers. This, those who are of the household of faith. You encounter God through a spiritual community life. Let me tell you this. You have a spiritual family just like a physical family. And the spiritual family, of course, ultimately is our family connected to God. But on earth and territorially, you will never prosper spiritually if you are not connected to a larger body of a spiritual family. God designed it that way. Are we together? There are all kinds of spiritual possibilities that are vested, broadly speaking, in the body of Christ, but uniquely speaking to the spiritual family that God connects to you. Friends, revelation, access to anointing, access to help. There are many believers when they are in trouble, for instance, and they need to see the mercy of God. There is no man and there is no community to come and reveal the mercy of God to them. Someone dies, you are alone. Nobody to come and greet you. You give birth to a child, nobody. You are not part of any larger body of believers that can be sympathetic to what you are doing. When you need to see the hand of God, you are not connected to anyone. Most times when people come and talk to me and say, Apostle, this is uh, somebody, a member of Koinonia and all of that. Most times I ask, what department? He says, ah, I'm not in any department, but I can assure you I'm faithful. He says, ah, you are marking yourself already. How do you know you are faithful? Community life is very powerful when it has to do with experiencing God. A, a spiritual family shields you. There are some of us here right now, physically, you almost don't have a family. Either everybody has died or everybody is completely wayward and not of God or everybody hates you. And already you are just like a prodigal son, but for a good reason. Until you find God, don't come back home. Are we together? Some of us are unbelievers. We are the first Christians in our family. So you really don't have, you can't stand there in isolation. Look at this. How many of you have seen charcoal burning? Coal burning, red hot coal. Remove one red hot one and just keep it. Don't off the, uh, what they call it now. Just leave it there. Don't pour water on it. After a while, what happens? It starts going down. So the strength of that fire was the community life. Notice that every time Satan wants to destroy a life, one of the ways is he will make everybody in your community your enemy. He will make you to have problem with everyone. Your head of department, apostle, anybody. When all your helpers have been driven through your hatred, when you are alone, it's not only God that comes to Jacob when he's alone. Satan too comes when you are alone. He can come to you and say, now that the person who can pray for you is gone. Now that the sister that can support you, you have, you have hated her and you have insulted her, I can now strike you. And your pride will not allow you to run to them. So you will stay there till they find your dead body spiritually. Community life is powerful. Are we together now? When the believers were afraid and they were persecuted. Imagine if all of them hid one by one. They went somewhere and stayed alone. Even in times of crisis, as in physically speaking, the security. When people are clustered within an area, it becomes, even if they are afraid, it becomes difficult for the enemy to just break every siege there. Some of us stand alone and do everything alone and we flatter ourselves into believing that we are strong my bible says two are better than one is that true the bible says then when they become three they become a, a cord that cannot be easily broken community life is a powerful system to have an experience of god when you come into the sanctuary there are dimensions of god that you ordinarily would not have gotten in your personal place of prayer but God reveals himself as the word of God is coming now. As you look at your brother, someone taking the testimony, promise is coming to take the testimony. You are learning something about God. Somebody is doing this. You are learning something. They raise a song of worship. You see a Jimmy worshiping. Wow. So great men can worship God this vocally. You are what the 
the worship team revealing the excellence of God there are things you will never learn just sitting down in your room are we together listen let me tell you this let us encourage and, and, and I'm saying this from a personal point encourage your children to have a desire for the house of God not just the things of God there are families here that come as a family for koinonia I truly am honored when I see that because it's, it's not just a sacrifice they are salvaging a generation especially some of these are young children some of them hate God. The devil is planting a seed of hatred in them. Have you seen them? They come to the house of God. They never enter and sit down. They stroll around. They, they hang around. They move around. They are making calls. They are doing this. If they say something that is funny, they laugh outside. And then they turn. They continue. You give them offering. They go and buy, uh, uh, what do we call it? Puff, puff around. And they are eating. Let's not, let's not, it's not a laughing matter. It's a sign that we are losing something. Are we together? The house of God. So you go home now and you say, let's pray. See the child frowning his face. He's coming to sit down. It's time for prayer. I say, please, this prayer that they are lying in this house. It's better to be lying with prayer. It's better. community life community life Hebrews 10 25 Hebrews 10 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is he said but exhorting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching are we together that we should not forget and forsake the assembling of ourselves you've heard me listen to my message um preservers of divine ordinances part one and two i teach there that any spiritual environment is bankrupt if there is no platform that can create a convergence of believers for the purpose of training equipping and mentorship you can look at a territory and know that there are no apostolic and prophetic voices because there is no platform honored by God you see his signature there as a prophetic platform that has nothing to do with denominational barriers you know that this one is God making his presence known mentoring a territory to know him it's not just tied to i am this i'm that i'm apostle this i'm prophet this i'm apostle joshua Selma. no there has to be a, a platform where believers are mentored where they grow are we together Let's read one more scripture. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. And then we'll move to something that I think um, we can just stop at point one. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how God will help us. So you have an experiential revelation of God. That's the first key. And that by his word, number one. Number two, by the presence, your participation in the household of faith. Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 12. Take heed, brethren, look up please. Lest there be any of you, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Next verse, 13. But exhort one another. How long? Exhort one another, not exhort God. Exhort one another. That means I have a role to play in your spiritual growth. You have a role to play in my life. You will think that because I am the one who is majorly building you, you don't have any role. He say, exhort one another. Daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. That means something happens. Come, Pastor Femi. That Pastor Femi can be a powerful believer but in isolation to the supply of the body 
are we together now there is no system of exhortation he may not even know when he has veered off sincerely and not know but that the presence of the corporate body is a spiritual system for check and balance are you getting what i'm saying now you may not know you may be busy pastor femi and maybe have two months of ministration all around and not have the time to pray for instance and you may be justifying yourself but when you come now and see that i'm busier than you and yet i'm still praying by that act i have exhorted you i have killed the excuse the devil wants to take to say i am busy you go back and say no if i'm just doing one ministration per week and it's affecting my prayer life someone that is doing three are you seeing that now yeah the moment you want to become proud and arrogant i just got one million and then you come and turn and you see a jimmy lying down ah and you say how much is his shirt how much is his shoe you just say i, I better drop my my small one million that is entering my head and lie down and roll before god you are exhorting you don't just exhort by talking your life shows it too when you see people that love God more than you rolling on the ground, sometimes you don't plan to roll. But when you look around, ah, Benga is kneeling. Ah, Daddy Prof is kneeling. Ejimi is rolling. Promise is rolling. You turn back, Sam is kneeling. You will feel stupid. I say, what I say, do you better join and kneel down? Those outside are falling more than those inside. Are we together? Yes. It is the absence of this corporate life that makes local champions leave God. There is no system. Have, when, when you start making money and you go where wealthy people are worshipping God, they throw their phone away and roll on the floor. You just stand and say, this is my boss. This is the person that gave me the job that I've been testifying. I heard she was a millionaire before I was born. So this is how this woman rose before God. You call your wife and say, wife, we will roll on that carpet. Roll on the ground. Sometimes you need someone higher than you to show you how to serve God. Because you see, every time you have results, sometimes they confuse you. How do I serve God at this new level? And God says, come to the house of God. I started prophesying. And right now, one month, everybody is placing a demand on my grace. And then God says, oh yeah, come and meet a prophet who started prophesying before you were born again and see how he serves God. And all of a sudden, you are dancing. I got an award. And this award is this and that. And God says, come, let me show you the person who owns the company that gives the award and how he's serving God. Corporate life does so much. Many things happen in this service beyond the pulpit. You can have a heart of wickedness to annoy a brother or sister and all of a sudden they use their kindness and torture you all through the service. You say nasty things, they say no problem, it's well. This is my seat. Is my seat. No, okay, sit down. And while they sit down, favor just comes. Somebody says sit, sit here. Every bad thing you are doing, God is speaking to you in that service with results. Your message in that service becomes, look, it is, it is good to be good. This bad attitude, work on it. You will be surprised. I may be teaching on the anointing, but that's the message. You came to the house of God. There are many believers that are not like Christians because they are alienated from the house of God. They cannot. Do you know that the house of God even helps you to speak well? I mean educationally. I'm not talking of spiritually. Many dull people around who have alienated. When you listen to a man, you listen to a people that have some measure of excellence. Do you know that it will affect you? Many people, look at, uh, look at the children in Koinonia. You see how intelligent they are? Because they are gleaning from adults. They go back and meet their, their colleagues who don't, they are not smart. They, they, they just fail everything like that and say, ah, what is wrong? That's why the children of pastors are very intelligent. Because from birth, everybody holding them is praying or speaking or blessing. They don't have the opportunity for wickedness to touch them. That's why Satan keeps timing them. You are in the house of God. Turn to your neighbor and say this and that. Turn to your neighbor and do this. You can even help socialize. You came from a bad background where you even hate yourself. You came to the house of God. And you are somebody who is shy. You can't turn and tell somebody, God bless you. And before you know it, someone... 
carries his hand, gives you a big hug. And you are like, ah, so this is how this thing is. By next Sunday, you are ready. Come on now, talk to me, Koinonia. Watch this. The first person who ever hugged you was somebody in the house of God. And you felt so bad, you thought there were strings attached until they told you that's how they are here. And you say, really? And somebody looks at you and says, the Lord told me. You never knew that God can speak to men to bless you. But someone just turns and says, Pastor Femi, um, I don't know, are you a first timer? Yes. The Lord asked me to give you 10,000. Whereas you came, God told you to leave your house and come by faith that someone will pay your transport. If you didn't come to the house of God, you will never experience God that way. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you neglect the gathering of the saints, it is not the same thing as listening to a tape. There are things your eyes need to see. There are things your ears need to hear. I believe it's even one of the reasons, eh, Jimmy, why our generation keeps marrying bad wives and husbands. Where are you going to get a good wife? Let's be very sincere. Your chances of getting a very good God. Remember, you need to marry somebody who believes what you, are, what you believe. You pray in tongues and somebody say, I'm calling police. Is, is that marriage? How? Or the man wants to sow and say, for what? How much are we earning that we're going to sow? Because you don't understand these principles. Take seriously what I'm saying. Many believers, I, I don't know, sometimes I don't know what is wrong with us. We come and we sit down and then we go outside, go and ship all versions of unbelievers, bring into our lives and the devil said, thank you. That one thing I've been looking for to cheat you in life, you finally gave me. Ah, the brothers in church are not nice. The sisters in church, let me tell you, it's better to die in church. Oh. Let me just give you a very honest statement. Because God is always found in the midst of the lampstands. If a brother slaps you in church, there's somebody he submits to, you can report. If your, if your wicked bubble somewhere slaps you, who will you report to? His father. Listen. Hallelujah. Sit down. As, as you are hearing me, you see God is saying many things this night. But there are many stubborn believers that as God is talking now, you have programmed your spirit to be as hardened as whatever. May you be delivered this night in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Allow any, any unbeliever somewhere, just go and fool you and laugh around and say, oh, don't mind all these God people. You are going to your church again. Haba, you can't make this sacrifice for me. That's already a Luciferian spirit. It's a revelation to run away fast. He has not married you, he is, he's, he's stopping, he's resenting a man of God. The man of God that is training and building you. He's saying, oh, don't mind all these people. And you are truly, you are not minding them. Say the house of God. People have gotten jobs because of their connection. Is that true? With Christian families. Please learn this thing. Many of our loved ones are suffering in pride because there is a dimension of the love and the mercy of God in the house of God that they have ignored. By God's grace, in this ministry, as you know, we have a system that provides help for people. It may be in limited ways, but at least we make sure we do. There are people just being members of Koinonia their school fees were settled till they graduated. They didn't come from families that could allow that. And they saw the love of God. And it's not necessarily that it was me that paid it. Some of them just came together. Ah, this is your final year. You got born again in January. Oh, it's better than nothing. You are welcome. So what's the issue now? My school fees. How much do you have? 1,000. How much is left? 40,000. No. Believers, let's come together. Let me tell you. Don't let anybody make you hate the church hear what i'm saying don't let i know that we have issues i'm not saying we don't have issues are we together but don't make anybody when we started this ministry our fun our jokes our time out everything was among believers it's why you see the marriages in this ministry very solid and powerful are we together very solid and powerful
is God speaking to you? Stability through fellowship. That God is revealing, he's, he's experientially revealing himself. Please, sisters, let me say it again. Don't marry anybody. Don't even say yes. Don't say let's try two months or two months. No, don't even do one day. Don't marry anybody that is not connected to any spiritual family. Even if he tells you he's born again. I repeat, don't marry any man. Insult me, but just listen. Any man, this I love you, I love you thing. This, we're in the end times. The devil is, is, is destroying people's destinies. You will be unfair, not just to yourself, but to the children that are coming out of you. That's how you have all these people go around deceiving these girls that they are Christians. Before you know it, the moment they get married, they say, I hope you know, you understand that me, when it's cold, I take a, 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 this thing. And the lady saying, I never saw, I said, is this just because I gave a little break? The, the house of God has a system that ensures you get it right. Well, it's my job to teach and say what I'm saying. It's your own job to listen and hear what I'm saying as a word from the Lord or stubbornly decide to do whatever you want. I will always pray for you even if you crash land. I have loved you with an everlasting love. But my advice is that it is better to be happy by listening. Are we together? Thank you, Pastor Femi. Number, number three, still on point one. Remember, I'm teaching on the keys that create stability in your work with God. And the first point we said was an experiential revelation of God. And we broke it down into a few points. Number one is that the word of God can help you experience God. Number two, the family of believers. Are you ready for number three? Number three. Now, hold on, please. Pay attention here. If this is where we stop tonight, then media, this becomes part one. Are we together? This becomes spiritual stability part one. I doubt if we'll be able to finish because there are four points. But the third way of knowing God experientially is through your pain and challenges. Write it down. I want to seriously teach here. Psalms 107. We are going to read verse 6, verse 13, verse 19 and 28. 6, 13, 19, 28. Actually, the whole verse there. I want to make you love your past tonight. Not necessarily past and all. You know, many times we men of God teach, hate the past, leave it, yes. But I want to show you there is something from your yesterday that can reveal the God of your tomorrow. They cried unto the Lord. When? Not in their comfort. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And what did he do? He came in as a deliverer. Next verse. Verse, um, what now? 13. Please give us verse 13. Still 107 Psalms 13. They cried unto the Lord again in their trouble. What did he do? He didn't deliver them. He saved them. Are you seeing different dimensions? They cry unto the Lord. Their trouble makes them to cry unto the Lord. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But there is something about your pain and the knowledge of God. There is a relationship between your tears. There is a relationship between your challenges and your disappointments and the unique revelation of God to you. Hmm. Pain and challenges force, force us to need and prioritize God. Write it down. Your pain and your challenges they have a way of forcing you to need and prioritize God. There are many of us, it's not that you have left God, but sincerely, He's not a priority. And so certain times when, when certain things shake you and hit you, all of a sudden you will remember that there, I, I need to run back to God. I need to make things right with them. I don't believe that God goes around 
causing people pain and sorrow no the bible says every good and perfect gift but because of our human nature god utilizes every unfavorable moment let me tell you a spiritual man is one who can turn both glory and pain into something that helps him to know god we have this we have this um we have this level there there's something about believers we frown at pain when believers go through challenges and sometimes the church again we are the ones who bring these kinds of things come sam all of a sudden something happens to sam maybe he loses a loved one are we together and god forbid sam just an example and or something happens to him there's disappointment somewhere and you hear believers come ah, ah sam didn't you hear god what this didn't this happen didn't this happen whereas god is is taking advantage of that opportunity to say sam i'm bringing you to a point where there is something about me you otherwise would not know if he did not go to the cave of adulam david would never know certain things about god please listen to what i'm saying if you started that ministry from day one and one thousand people came you will never believe god is a god of process and so with all your anointing for the first one year only two members the day you did your thanksgiving four came two left before the service was over and you just called your wife your wife said my husband i've never doubted you but kai today let me tell you the truth i know that when you told me god called you it's not i'm using i'm using husband i'm using a come wife now watch this I've never doubted you. You said God, God called you. I said, yes, he called you. Are you not seeing what, I've, is it not, is it not my, my anointing that, that made your, your father sick that he allowed me to marry you? Why, when I, what are you, you are doubting me today? And then all of a sudden, the man is now touched and said, Lord, if my own wife, that is the surest member of my church, is about to leave, you better speak to me. Oh, did you call me? Watch this. That seven days dry will lead you to call on to God. And God just comes and says, son, write this. I, it is true. I have anointed you to speak my purposes to the nation. A, B, C, D. When you will now be dancing, celebrating 10 years anniversary, when it's your time to give the testimony, you are now going to say, look, I know that God is the lifter of men. And you see the wife crying because she knows the other members are just laughing they came into the inheritance of the promise but the woman is standing there come darling are we together ah we want to thank god for our mother our this and she's just looking at them lord thank you if i left now this i would have buried my head in shame thank you jesus You have wasted your pain and your challenges and never knew God through them. You conquer challenges not by having a way out but by seeing God in them. In every challenge there is a dimension of God that is waiting to be revealed. Listen brothers and sisters in every challenge there is a dimension of God. There are dimensions of God you may never know. he slay me yet will I trust him there are things you hear me say casually about God today brothers and sisters is because of the abundance of what I have gone through there are things that you can hear us say at the beginning of this ministry remember I told you how things didn't work there were times that I prayed I fasted I sowed seeds I've said it you've heard me say it again all my scholarships were spent on the kingdom never spent anything on myself there are times that my heavens will close oh god is this titan working or not so when you see somebody come and say apostle i've been titan since january say just january and you are complaining <laughs> just january and it's not like the favor closed it's just that it's not yet enough you better thank god and keep moving there's something you know let me tell you when you are too innocent in life you can't be sent um, not I, I, I no the word is I hope I hope you understand what I mean by innocent when you are scarless you can't be sent there is a level of scar that must be on you as a testament you are never please help those under the anointing there 
you can never represent God scarless. There is a mark that is a testament. Are we together now? Yes. You've never been disappointed in your life. You've never had to cry in your life. You've never had to lock the door to pray. And as a man of God, just kneel down and say, Lord, I don't hate you, but right now, I don't know what to say. Don't mind all these people that lie all around and make it look like they've been laughing forever. It's a lie. Even Jesus wept. Say it after me. Jesus. One more time. Jesus. The son of the living God. The word that creates everything got to a point in his life where he said, Father, imagine if that part of Jesus was not captured for us. We'll feel guilty whenever we cry in the midst of challenges. But today, someone can lose a loved one. And while we come, we'll not just say, why didn't you have faith? We will continue to teach on life. But we can join together and cry. And not feel bad. Apostle, you are crying that somebody died. Well, what happened to the anointing that you walk with? No problem. You may laugh at me, but I, I, have, I have learned something with God. That he's not just a mighty God. He can also be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. So I will not just preach life and run away from you when you lose your loved ones. And say, no, 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 we are, we are life-giving spirits. No, we are life-giving spirits, but there are women who died and didn't receive the promise. And the Bible joined all and called it faith. So we will cry together. Are we together? Oh, you come and all of a sudden you say, look, apostle, this and that and that and that, this and that. I mean, you know, not to feel bad, but I mean, look at this is how my life is. I made a stupid decision. I, I carried my salary and all of a sudden somebody scammed me and this happened. I'm just like, you are stupid. I've been drumming divine direction. No. Compassion. Pain and challenges reveal a dimension of God to you and through you that no other thing, no other dimension of kingdom living can reveal. There are some of you here, God will allow you purposely to stay without food so that the day you become a multi-millionaire, you can look at a family and they can say, Apostle, do you know we love God, but as it is, there's no food this night. You will say, well, maybe I've, I've prophesied to you. What else are you waiting for? No compassion is not natural with the natural man something must happen to a man to make him compassionate there's nothing like i'm naturally kind no it is life that can bring someone to his knees there are some of you here for instance you by your normal standard you probably would have been doing phd now or even be professors but some of you you are in 300 level right now it may look like it's a disadvantage but there is something through that pain that is revealing god tomorrow when you see somebody going through things and people say this yeah yeah guys say no i've been there you know why i don't talk against men of god they've persecuted me and they do it every time i know the pain of being persecuted i know the pain of being lied about i know the pain of being misunderstood so i will never sow that seed not to you not to anybody that's why i never insult the body of christ when you hear people do that they are still innocent let them continue growing i know the pain of what it means to see a young man with influence like this and say maybe they are using charm or demonic power no I know the pain of people trivializing your sacrifice. Everybody say pain. Say challenges. A lady that has entered five or six relationships and has been disappointed by all those brothers, gave her heart, gave her all, and those brothers just made life miserable for her. It may be bad, but if you can see Christ through your pain, the sight of him will wipe your tears all of a sudden. And you'll say thank you. After all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. What have you gone through in life? Hold on. I want to ask you a question, everyone listening to me. What have you gone through in life that has made you matured? What have you gone through in life that has stopped you from insulting men? What have you gone through in life, man of God, that will make money not to move you? 
what have you gone through in life how many of you know that there is a way life whips you that even when you see the result you don't celebrate much again because you started celebrating without the result you are already used to it so if someone buys a car you just say lord thank you and then you go back and say lord who should i give it to because oh, you can enjoy this one and it doesn't move you because you have learned to rejoice in the midst of pain i show you a, a this is a very mature spiritual teaching i believe in prosperity i will continue to speak over your life to be blessed i remember one dear lady years ago one of our, our dear, well not really part but a dear lady it was a few weeks to her wedding when something happened cats had been out several things happened i mean everybody was rejoicing like every other lady she was happy ready to rejoice and then something just went terrible cut the long story short wedding was cancelled i remember when i got the text in my mind i said no my, all i was thinking about is this lady because the same friends that were dancing are the same ones that will run and say ah so you see that that's the thing you do you know this is a dimension of god through men that you need to learn that he's truly a friend that stick it closer than a brother someone who can stand and say i will be with you and all of a sudden the moment they say crucify him they will join the people and say crucify you Many of us don't have the wisdom of the spirit because our lives are too innocent. That's why you trust anybody anyhow. That's why you do anything anyhow. Please listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. Are we together? I remember calling the lady. When I called her, as soon as she picked my call, she started crying. Because people had called her were disappointed. Why didn't you find out A and B and C and D? All kinds of nonsense. See, men, ba, you need to love God to love men. Men can be so wicked, you will be justified to hate them. Are we together? I called that dear lady. I said, sweetheart, where are you? I said, I need to see you. Let's meet in the night. And in her mind, she thought, you know, most times when people hear my messages, they believe that I'm a disciplinarian with all versions of whips. I'm not a stupid person. Are we together? Yes. God gives anointing, but our brains are still there. We are human beings. When I teach, I teach in a preventive way. That's why sometimes you can see I can lash it, but when you are meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, you are dealing with real-life issues. We are humans. It doesn't mean it's not an excuse for you not to listen. To just say, okay, so since there's another dimension, there is hellfire and there's mercy too. All created by God. Are we together? I remember calling that lady, and when she came, I was seeing her inside a car. And the first thing I did was to just hug the lady, and she began to cry. And I didn't say a word. I just allowed. Sometimes, don't stop people from crying too early. These tears you see is not just what comes out in her eye, it's a language. And this lady said, Apostle, why would God do this to me? And I said, No every time we don't understand god we give thanks it's something i learned through my own pain it's not like i i learned it before i read it in the bible whenever you don't understand god just give thanks why me is not a wise thing lord why is my church not growing why did this and that and that happen you give thanks i remember comforting that dear lady and i told her something i said every time god closes a window check well a door is about to open and i remember when that lady was going to get married oh it was with honor it was with joy you know the kind of joy that will make you forget the pain of yesterday listen let me speak to someone there are many of you who you have not learned to see god in your pain you have not learned to see god in your challenges I'm encouraging you tonight when you look back don't look at the problems continue to look Mary Magdalene was looking at a graveyard and she saw Jesus there Jesus is also in the grave he's not just on the throne she came to the grave and was looking who goes to the grave only dead men there are no living people in the grave but when you stand through that grave 
you can see Jesus looking at you to say you may have been abused when you were young you may have gone through all kinds of things but don't be ashamed of it I am raising you with an anointing tomorrow you are going to have a foundation one uncle deceived you here and don't worry and all of a sudden you are healed you are strengthened and you can rise up and be a blessing as believers both our glory and our pains are still weapons that can bring him glory is God speaking to someone today sometimes I share some of the testimonies of yesteryears not because I'm stupid everybody has his reputation too I share some of these things and it's amazing how some of these messages comfort some of you because if you just see all the things that God is doing today you may think just because you are anointed you are shielded from it nobody is immune from tears Jesus wept every other person in him will weep too there are times that life can push you I've wept at funerals of people here I have had to comfort people we have lost loved ones things have happened around but even at that even when we cannot explain we still say Lord thank you Lord thank you can you lift your voice in one minute and just say Lord thank you even in the midst of the pain in the midst of the pain Lord I went through unfavorable things I trusted a man who disappointed me I trusted my boss he disappointed me Lord I thought by now I would have graduated and standing before me are five carryovers I thought I would get first class my last result I thought I would be promoted and I was driven but I give you thanks I give you thanks I may not understand what you are doing in and through me but Lord I know that you do all things I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest hour, through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing. something will happen by the time you graduate and for five years there's no job you will now know why people write prayer requests here 
for now he said ah, what is there about prayer requests every month it's because everything in your life is paid for the day your father look at you and say young man after this month as we are clocking 30th of this month you are packing your load and you are going and you will think he has an honorarium for you he will just wave you and say my old father just did bye bye and I, the same thing I am doing for you and for the first day you will sleep under a tree that's the day you open your Bible and say, no, I must get this thing. Yes, Don't waste your pain. Some of you would have entered certain anointings by now if only you could look at God through your pain. There is, the Bible says, for we know, the rest may not know, but we know that all things, how many things? Talk to me, say all things. All things. Work together. Apostle, what kind of life is this? I graduated since 2013. I've been loving God. There's no work now for me. Is it that I don't serve God? Apostle, I love God. I love the things of God. But not one guy in my whole life, there's no gentleman that has come to say, ah, you're a beautiful lady, I want to. Am I cursed? <clears throat> it's because you are becoming a mother of nations, not a wife. And so God is saying, I need you to have the kind of compassion that will be required for a mother of nations. Today I can minister to people because every time I want to be wary, there is always something God can use from my past. People say apostle is humble. I'm not humble. It's a revelation of God that has kept me like that. The moment I want to lift up my head, God just has to show me one vision of one night I could not afford Gary. And I say, where, where is the pride coming from? Your past can help you maintain your glory. Your past has something in it that can help you keep your glory. When you see a man of God blessed and consistent and stable, there is nothing that is natural like that. There are many of you, you will not have listened to God. Every time they talk to you, you are stubborn towards instruction. So God allowed you. And for one year, like the prodigal son, you went away from mentorship and instructions and you saw the casualties that it brought to your life and now god comes back again and says can i now help you and you say lord please i will never leave you again are we together we'll stop here tonight make it part one we have part two there, there there's something very deep that i want to share i'll share with you next week or whenever whenever it is that we have the opportunity listen to me brothers and sisters I made certain covenants with my life at certain seasons of pain not luxury there were things I went through in my life and I vowed to God I said Lord if you ever prosper me I will not let one person die of hunger in my presence I would not have said that if money and all these resources just came cheaply I may be part of those like you people running your mouth at every family irresponsible people look how simple it is to prosper so there are times God can allow you you go through this you pray you fast no door opens so that when he blesses you with 10 naira and says give that 10 naira here you don't want people to lick your shoes just because of that there are certain anointings there are people who got certain impartations early in life you see that early in life and it made them proud what is there about this in fact right now i can even show that the power of god will move one two three four and they make all kinds of things mismanagement of the anointing then one day god will leave them and you find out for one year it looked like your heavens were closed you go for a meeting you live there asking did god call me in the midst of your pain God begins to show you the visions of the foolishness and the pride. You insulted every man of God because you had more revelation than your local pastor. You insulted him all this, this, this dull reverend doesn't know anything. And God kept watching. When that heaven closed towards you, God will now say, go and meet that reverend for prayer. He's the one who will open your heavens. And you drag yourself in shame like somebody that has finished fighting wrestling. And the reverend looks at you and says, you, 
I had you talk nonsense. God said, you better apologize there. When you learn it, like Samson, the anointing comes back again. But this time around, you know the value of the anointing because you believe that you, you are too precious, you won't lose it. You kept reading books that ah, this and that happens. The day it left you, you don't need to ask whether it goes again. You learned a lesson by yourself. There are some of us who were very innocent. We insult every mother. You see somebody's mother insult the mother and say, Kai, this woman said this and that. I sat down near her. Ah, she didn't put any perfume. Kai, what kind of a smelly, you know, this koinonia. And God is saying, no problem. It's because you had a father who was a this and that. All of a sudden, another government will come and they won't give him appointment. And your friends will say, ah, where is our jeep now? He said, no jeep again, no. And then when they leave you like the prodigal son, then you come back to your senses. And the next time God gives you a jeep, you don't just say, come and see jeep. You say, come and see God's faithfulness. It will suddenly become God's faithfulness, no longer jeep. We're going to pray tonight. I don't know what, what pain you may be going through now. And you are saying, Lord, if you called me, why am I going through this? I'm answering you right now. Lord, why is my life like this? And God is saying, I'm bringing glory. You have called me as a kingdom financier. Lord, I've never held 50,000 of my money. And God says, I need to teach you that. Listen, let me tell you. When God called me into the apostolic ministry, there are few challenges of people I didn't go through. How else? Do you relate with people? Are we together? There are times people will bless me and God will ask me to sow it. And when I sow it, I'm alone. And I'm saying, God, what is this? Somebody refused to tighten me. I'm tightening my own heavens. Come and you ask me to carry it. And what is that? And it's amazing how God doesn't answer. There are times that God's silence is a training process. It may not be an attack. He's teaching you how to wait. Lord, will you arise? Based on the Bible studies you did, they say if you call him, he is nigh those who call upon him. Yes, it's true, but he's training you. You teach someone how to call God, he's enjoying an express service with God, and you, the tutor, is there under closed heavens and hazy hearing. Lord, what is this? I've been married for five years, no child. Lord, what I mean, what is the meaning of this? You are calling me into ministry and no child. And then God says, prophesy to all the barren women. Ha, ah, God, what embarrassment is this one again? And he says, do it. He's killing the flesh. You may not know, it's not about a child. God can give you a child even in one week. He's killing the flesh. Tonight, we're going to spend, the way we're going to do this prayer, We'll do a general prayer, but before then, I'm going to give you five minutes. You're going to find any corner or find anywhere. Listen, before you go, overflow one, two, three, just find somewhere. I'd like you to focus and say, Lord, thank you for my pain. I used to hate it. I know that I was raped when I was two years old. I know that I lived alone. I got, I'm the only Christian in my family. And yet... I will call on you and it will look like nobody will answer. Lift your voice and pray. You never would have come into the house of the Lord if you were too innocent. There are some of you, you never would have even known that the call of God is upon your life. Lift your voice. Pray. Please be serious tonight. Talk to him in your language. Lord, I thank you. My pain has made me wiser. My pain has made me a woman of compassion. I used to be a heartless woman. I used to be a heartless man. I used to be a very, very uncompassionate man of God. But you have used my disappointment. Now I can look at people and know that they are doing their best. I will insult people again. I used to think ministry was so easy until I carried my anointing and I was surprised that in spite of my being anointed, doors are still closed. Now I know that except God helps a man, 
it is not the eloquence of speech that can help you lord when i was in the university i insulted every graduate because i thought they didn't know what they were doing now i've been a graduate for 10 years 20 years with no job i now know that if god does not help me nobody can pray lord show me your glory through my pain reveal something in my life through my pain i've gone through pain i've gone through disappointment lord i lost my loved ones i lost my father i lost my mother i lost my brothers it was and for some of you it's still a painful experience but lord in the midst of it there has to be something through my pain that can glorify you if you never had a spillover you probably would never be born again you would be an arrogant graduate your promotion was due three years now you've not been promoted could it be that in that delay god wants to teach you something pray oh lord let my pain help me know you let my challenges help me know you give me a new name that you have through this pain let my pain not be wasted oh god let me not cry for nothing if i have cried let me also see you if i've been disappointed let me see you through it just because I'm anointed something has happened to me there is a birthing there is a breaking of the outer man the breaking of that flesh when I went through the dark days in my life they helped me make certain vows to God I will never look down on anybody that's why some of our young ones here that are in ministry usually men of God who go ahead like this to some measure look down on the ones who are coming up and make it look like I would never never do that to anybody no matter how small no matter how little I believe in you we can correct you where you need to be corrected and lift you you know why because I know I've been there listen 
some of you what you are going through now is not for you is for the sake of those you are being sent to God does not want you to arrive at the place of destiny and not be able to relate to the pain of those who are coming so you pay the school fees by yourself and now you are in final year probably and you are wondering oh lord where will this school fees come from and then by the time god helps you he now tells you like peter when you are converted strengthen your brethren the next time you see somebody hungry don't criticize and laugh because you know what hunger means we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched touched with the feelings of our infirmity when i was growing up as a little boy i didn't have too much of uncles and aunties to show me the way of the lord and love me that's why after service you see all these my children come and run they can match me and do anything i love them the way they are because i want to show them that being an adult is not a cause against children something about your character can only be changed through your pain something about your hardness to the voice of god can only be changed through your pain something about your rebellion to his instructions can only be changed through your pain a sermon will not change it there is something you must go through i'm sorry but it's true sometimes that disappointment god will have the power to stop it but he will leave it he will make sure it does not hurt you to the point where it's unbearable but he will need you to learn something in it it's a painful experience but it's called a circumcision when you circumcise a child that child does not laugh while you are circumcising him but do you stop the circumcision because the child is crying no that's what is happening to you so for some of you right now i wish the prayer will be oh god take away the challenge sincerely for some of you the prayer is isaiah 43 lord be with them as they pass through that fire because for some of you you are not coming out of that fire soon that fire is doing something to you i know you will not like me for what i'm saying but i am telling you allow that fire to refine you and you will look and not see pride in your life again allow that fire to refine you and you will look and see the anointing you are admiring on tv is with you in the fire people don't become anointed on the throne they become anointed in the cave of Abulam. i want you to pray one serious prayer just one prayer lord whatever training you are passing me through continue to pass me through until i become like a trophy it's not a dangerous prayer it's a sensible prayer for mature believers god will not kill you no lord you have spoken to me about prosperity that you are giving me a mantle for wealth and lord i've seen how money has destroyed people whatever oh god needs to prove my appetite to make me not use money to destroy my life and others work on me lord you told me i will have a level of fame through the anointing and the, the revelatory gifts of the spirit pride is inevitable the tendency for pride is there so lord work on me let that circumcision happen to me Whatever needs to be broken, let it be broken. Whatever needs to be pruned, let it be pruned. Are you praying? Only mature people can pray this prayer. Take away the pride, oh God. Lord, I don't have a heart of mercy. Use my pain to make me merciful to others. I have a critical spirit. But oh God, through my challenges, Give me a heart that loves people. I find people who do not hold my viewpoints in life. Do something in me that grants me compassion. That the next time I hear that something is happening to someone, 
I will be the first to show love, not to show hate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, say it, everybody, Lord, I declare that as you bless me, as you heal me, as you deliver me, I vow to serve you with my life. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Take my mind. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, hey, no turning back. Don't man forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Come on, sing it before him. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Hey, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. It's a costly assumption to assume tonight that everybody wants to follow Jesus. He said, I've, I've discovered that there are people who genuinely are not interested in following God. I'm not talking of self-perfection. I'm talking of a sincere committal to following Jesus genuinely with your life. No way. There are many parasites of Jesus financial parasites of jesus there are parasites of kingdom principles they want to use kingdom principles and mysteries as a ladder to become famous sir it doesn't work that way oh please hear me tonight there are people every time you hear a man of god talk about passion for jesus you think they are talking about ordination to ministry no sir is an addiction to see his kingdom come for god's sake what else will i be doing with my life if not lifting up his name jesus i lift up your name jesus i lift up your name that's what i do for a living jesus i lift up your name yeah jesus i lift up your name Time to lift your voice and say, Jesus, I lift up your name. I lift up your name. Jesus, I lift up your name. If God cannot find his purposes fulfilled through your life, I tell you, forget about the outstretched hand of God. You hear me say this, don't let any man fool you. God is not a herbalist. My brother is your heart God is looking for. Not tight, not offering. Your heart, not music, not just energy. My son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. I want your heart. When we talk about Jesus Christ, many people frown their face as if you are speaking against civilization. The days that will come, please hear me, people of God. 
the days that will come will require outspoken radical passion for jesus all this organized civilized nonsense that makes god look secondary will be the recipe for the dominion of darkness over the life of people oh i'm now 25 years don't don't make me look like a child i'm now 30 years i hope you know i'm now the director of a and b and c nonsense and that's the reason why you're ah, ah. david danced before god and his wife said have king and keep your dignity and david looked at her and said hold on you don't even know the mystery of how you became my wife if you know it you will join me dancing i was a little boy with no hope no destiny didn't read any book i was a smelly shepherd in the wilderness i danced my way beyond any king to get to the throne and now because i am here you carry your dignity the bible says god had him all and that woman died barren it was not the devil that made her barren let my people go not that they may go around causing trouble and wasting time and just counting age and growing older let my people go that they may go and serve me this issue of living for jesus serving jesus no let bless him accepting him into your heart there are many people when you talk about genuine surrender not coming out to recite an altar call i make up my mind i am for jesus forever they laugh at you they laugh at you because it doesn't make sense to them they don't see the need why should i give my life to jesus i want to be the god of my own self so you manage your life by yourself i want to be the god of my own self so you answer your prayer by yourself i want to be the god of my own self so you mismanage your life by yourself it says submit down to the mighty hand of god then resist the devil and he will flee you know i sincerely see a lot of people great men and women of god who want to walk in the anointing and i see the way they play games with submitting to the authority of christ you will never be trusted with certain dimensions of the anointing until god vets your passion you can't fake it there is a level of kingdom influence and power no it go to a herbalist you will still not get that dimension it takes your heart dead to christ not just living this one you have died to the purposes of the kingdom otherwise you cannot carry certain levels of grace no the kingdom has rules you you can fake it with men but not with god there is a dimension brothers and sisters where god vets your heart and sees that pastor femi will live and die for me i'm not it's not one leg in today and god is not sure what you will become in 2019 no Basanko. please sit down listen to me everyone inside outside the overflows along the road listen i want to make a serious altar call now everybody sit down and listen carefully let me tell you something brothers and sisters coming to surrender your heart to jesus is not an initiation into a religion called christianity now are we together now where you are switching founders from an idol worshiper you were worshiping stone are we together and now you say guys stone is not a better alternative so i come to another founder there are not ten gods there is one god hear ye O israel the lord our god is one god i don't care who preaches what there is only one god 
the king eternal we can argue it but one day very soon the difference will be made clear there are people seated here listening to me i don't condemn you but brothers and sisters it's time to be serious with god shortly you're going to experience radical deliverances and healings and miracles but that is only useful when your heart is with god i don't care whether you have been a pastor for 10 years there are two altar calls i'm going to make in one right now please hear me carefully those following us online from any nation you're following just listen carefully you may not be able to run out but i want you to pay attention and participate number one there are people for you you have never made a genuine decision you have heard that people repent you have heard that people come to jesus you have even given them transport money but genuinely from your heart my father is a pastor that's not what i'm saying i grew up in a church you are joking you have to come genuinely we gave our lives to christ it's not an inheritance of a family you come personally the other day they blessed all of us together you are not born again it has to be genuine personal and conscious when i was a baby they baptized me come and join them as soon as i made that altar call you come and join them are we together number two there are those who the war of passion and seriousness with god there is this fear of getting serious with god for some reason you think if i get serious with god my, i won't make it in life the moment i'm serious with god i won't get a nice husband uh, men these days don't like serious ladies who, who lied to you which men which one are you talking about the drunk are there the smoke are there or a genuine holy ghost born again visionary brother if i'm serious with god when it's time to chop in the office my conscience will not allow me chop that's a joke is it that god cannot bless you must you bribe to rise that's how everybody is doing it you are lying that's not how every that's how you know or you have been taught that everybody is doing it elijah said i'm the only one god said keep quiet there are seven thousand others who have not bowed to bear please hear me there are people here god wants to visit your family but there is no one in your family who is born again and you will be the first tonight because god needs an access point to your family the system of the kingdom is such that god must find a portal within a territory to manifest his purposes within that territory if and when god does not find a man his power is still limited there must be an individual through sacrifice and alignment who will be able to host the purposes of the kingdom within a sphere to allow the possibilities of god find expression so if god wants to come to your family he moves everywhere and everybody says I'm, I'm, I'm too busy he comes to your mother she says i'm too busy looking for money he comes to your father i'm too confused to give my life to you comes to your brother no i'm i'm too i'm too i want to marry now god please go somewhere he comes to your sister i'm looking for men there's no time to look for god and god says i want to step into this family no one has given me space if god can find one person he, he needs to take it step by step when he finds you the prophetic implication of your relationship starts judging the powers of darkness one by one and before you know it someone starts having a strange dream in your family he lies down and he has a dream of rapture he won't share it but that dream would torture him till he thinks about it he would get up alone and you find out for the first time he didn't steal money again he saw angels he saw the white throne he doesn't need to know what it is his spirit has been designed to recognize spiritual things but tonight you must come genuinely to jesus don't come out here if you are playing games it has let me tell you the implication of coming out here you must be ready to scatter and destroy wrong dangerous and ungodly relationships by the grace and the spirit of god you just need the will the grace is what you receive here number two you must be ready and willing to be committed 
to the house of God to grow. This dilly darling with God is the recipe for failure. I'm too young to reject God. The fierceness of life will destroy me if at my level in life I claim I'm too big for God. Before we continue tonight, I'm going to count one to ten. Listen, everyone heard me loud and clear. Overflow outside, overflow along the road. As I'm speaking to you, the Holy Ghost is probing you. Those of you standing on the fence there, I see you. And the Lord is speaking to you online. Probably you are listening now or following from another nation of the world. And you are saying, but I'm far. Distance is no barrier. It doesn't matter. You are still on earth. Everyone on earth will be judged. Whether you are in London, whether you are wherever. I'm going to make this altar call now. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come to Jesus. I know you will be healed, young and old. I don't care how long you have been. You are saying, Lord, I'm tired of living my life the way I want. I want to hand it genuinely. Inside, outside, start running. One to ten. One. Genuinely run like there's fire on the mountain. Two. Mina Yesu ne bazanko bazanko so keep coming don't say there's no space even if you have to line up outside no problem this is your salvation with god greater than any miracle tonight just find somewhere to stand if the place is full keep lining up here right outside five someone is still thinking about it and saying apostle i'm a nice person have never done anything wrong it's just that i've not declared jesus join them by the self-righteousness of no man can he be saved you didn't do anything wrong but that very nature of darkness is resident upon you all of you who are standing here please don't look at anyone lift your voice in one minute and begin to talk to jesus everyone who is standing stretch right outside and those online talk to jesus right now and say jesus i come to you i come to you pray talk to him and everyone seated i expect you to be praying for someone's salvation you know everybody around you cannot be saved there is somebody somewhere still hardened towards the things of god lift your voice and cry to jesus Lord, I'm saved, but my father is not saved. He's on his way to hellfire, and I know it. My mother is not saved. I know today that if the trumpet sounds, they are going to hell for sure. I know my sister is not saved. My husband is not saved. My wife is not saved. My colleague in office is not saved. Lord, I know that pastor is not saved. He has a church, but he's not saved. Pray. cry your heart to jesus he is here much miracle service you are meeting with the savior he wants to reveal himself first as savior before deliverer before healer hallelujah hallelujah all of you standing stretched to the outside please look at me i see you some of you are crying sincerely from your heart listen there is no man who has the power and authority to condemn you young and old i don't care what you have done i don't care how your life is we are all products of his mercy and grace are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man point an accusing finger but then you cannot remain where you are there are people standing here and say man of god if you will lead me to pray i will i will love it i've been praying for an opportunity like this but there are powers always keeping me 
wherever you are inside outside don't mind who is looking at you lift your right hand to heaven and you're going to say this prayer after me please it is not a poem it is a genuine genuine prayer meaning from the depth of your heart he says i am not ashamed of the gospel why for it is the power of god unto salvation the Lord wants to give you a new beginning. I know you came to be healed, but he wants to take over your destiny. With your hands lifted to Jesus, who is here, not in heaven, right here in this place. Say after me, passionately and sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. This night, I have heard your word and i make up my mind that from tonight and for the rest of my days i will live for you i will serve you without shame without fear without going back this night i hand over my life to you say it again i hand over my life to you be my Lord be my Savior I declare that the power of sin of Satan of the flesh is broken every association that is not of God I'm separated from them this night I declare that the joy of salvation and the peace and a new beginning is mine from today i am a child of god and i will live for him forever hallelujah keep your hands lifted jesus look at the ones you died for when you hung upon that cross you saw them and today we are glad to present them to you this is why you put this meeting together we lift them up as trophies worthy trophies for your blood worthy trophies for your death and lord i decree and declare that these ones you have brought tonight none will be lost i speak over your life the joy of salvation that very few people know about may it be your inheritance today i declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding let it be yours today i declare that every guilt the devil uses against you every accusation we roll it away right now in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven by the message of god i declare that you have a new beginning with god you are empowered by the spirit to live a victorious life in the name of jesus christ amen and amen Let's appreciate them. Keep standing, everyone. I'll give you some instructions now. Now, there are so many of you, probably hundreds of you. This is what I want you to do. Um, protocol, please help coordinate. Let's do it this way. Those of you who are in the second overflow, the overflow right from the door that leads to the road, as you go out, please let's have some of the ushers you stand so they can attend to you there what will happen is they are going to have your details i know you are all so many but we want your details we have a system to follow you up and to make sure you are grounded in god that's number one that's the first instruction so those outside those here at the overflow and those inside you may not need to go out just wait where you are and someone will come to attend to you please i hope the relevant departments are listening so that we can respond to them very quickly we have five ten minutes for this because i'll start praying for the sick now praise the lord now the second instruction i want to give all of you is this the bible says they that be planted in the house of god it says they shall flourish it is important not only for you to just get born again but to be planted in the house of god instruction number three is we have a system of spiritual growth here in koinonia it's a very large house so what we do is that anyone who gets born again automatically we transfer them to our prayer department for one month whether or not you will continue as a member in the prayer department
the prayer department meets Tuesdays 4 p.m. just at the church uh, when you walk from this road right down Rema Chapel more information will be communicated to you and so we usually have all um, new converts to be part of the prayer department there you get to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you have seasons of prayer to build your spirit and it helps you to cultivate a culture of the word and also to have a kingdom community that supports your spiritual growth all these things are very important for your growth I don't want you to waste this experience praise the Lord I bless you in the name of Jesus and shortly the Lord is going to be turning your life around in greater dimensions so let's do this very quickly appreciate them as they go just guide them whether or not you belong to any department you're a member of koinonia you see any of them moving just guide them as they go out quickly let's honor them koinonia as they do so is that the best you can do hallelujah Please coordinate them, coordinate them. Let's just give them some room so that they can go out and then we will shake off every power of darkness roaming around anybody's life. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. Hey, I never see anyone like you. Where's Sam? Help me. Like I never see anyone like you. 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 everyone stand up let's pray some prayers before let's pray some prayers while they are working on the people everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please say be serious in the name of Jesus father tonight visit me this is my destiny Give me strange results. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Visit me. In the name of Jesus, visit me. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Shout it again in the name of Jesus. Every long standing issue in my life and my destiny I declare that you must give way tonight lift your voice and begin to pray long standing challenges Are you praying tonight? Long standing issue. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you can, pair yourselves into two and pray this prayer. If you are holding a child or you are doing something, that's all right. Otherwise, find somebody, a serious neighbor, hold the hand. I want you to agree. Say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the door for the next level of my life and that of my neighbor must be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Agree. If any truth shall agree as touching, believe in what you are saying, you are opening doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still holding your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, take away shame. Take away mockery from my life, my family, and my neighbor. Lift your voice and pray seriously. Roll away the reproach. Roll away the reproach of mockery. Roll away the reproach of shame. Roll away the reproach. Pray. Roll away the reproach. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, expose every force, every yoke, every spirit behind the tragedies in my life, in my destiny, and my family. Expose them tonight. Lift your voice and pray. For the light shines in darkness. Pray for the light shines in darkness. Let your light shine, O God. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your anointing, let your unction locate me tonight and turn my life around. Lift your voice and pray that the power of God must locate me. Change my destiny. Let your power pray. One encounter with the anointing of the Holy Ghost can wipe your tears, my brother, my sister. Pray. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Lights, 
lights me Lord, lights me Lord, lights me Lord, like a candle, lights me Lord, lights me Lord, lights me Lord, like a candle, lights me Lord. Listen, listen to me. I will just give you an instruction. Just help those under the anointing, but listen to me carefully, please, everyone. Do you know the reason why we minister deliverance? Listen, listen carefully. You have to understand this. The reason why we minister deliverance, you don't spend your whole life going through deliverance. However, there are lives come, my dear, when a spirit listen carefully when a spirit latches onto your life and destiny brothers and sisters let me tell you i don't care what you do physically remember spiritual intelligence you can be doing the right physical things but the presence of a spirit representing an embargo representing a covenant an authorization for your doom will keep you down there and you find out that your life will never open up when people gather like this hear me they come with prayer requests they come with problems but you see behind those problems are spirits are we together now the spirits that are responsible for lack of favor the spirits that are responsible for a hard life the spirits that are responsible for infirmity all kinds of cases you know one of our dear people here in the ministry i prayed over the father's picture i've seen those kinds of cases on television and all of that but you could look at the leg and see the bone the bone the flesh had eaten to a point that you could see the bone what happened to the man he went to bed in the night brothers and sisters i think somebody did something for him in a dream and he woke up physically and his legs started eating up the bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness you want to move forward but there is an embargo the solution is not counseling you need an encounter with power everybody say power listen the power of the holy spirit is not a negotiator it's an enforcer when the power of god comes it does not ask you whether you want to be free your assignment is to be open till it reaches you when it comes it scatters anything that does not look like god lift your hands everyone just lift your hands and be silent i'll pray for you now the spirit of god is upon me lift your hands everyone there are people here right now I want you to bring there the first sets of people who will come out ushers grace for you and protocol i know you have a lot of work today because there's such a crowd right to the road but i want to pray everyone please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people right now in your silence hold on maybe just this the power of god will begin to come upon you what is happening right now before we pray for the sick is massive deliverance that deliverance is equal to breakthrough equal to new levels but lift your hands there are people here who are under strong yokes of delay and the lord gives me an instruction we will just lift our hands and be silent that's all the instruction and inside and outside the spirit of god will begin to locate them are we together when that happens then we'll take it off from there that's the first thing god wants to do tonight just lift your hands everyone thank you jesus the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and there are people and families and those following on online except you are not under the influence of the spirit of delay that spirit must leave you are we together so keep your hands lifted thank you Jesus Lord wherever they are right now I stretch my hands 
according to the instructions you have given me inside and outside right now i see the anointing of the spirit already falling over the spirit of delay keep your hands lifted bring them out outside there just the angels of the lord are walking i'm seeing like smoke just moving across lines line by line inside and outside when it comes to you when you are under that influence that's the end of it right now i command it the word of the lord is upon this prophecy in the name of jesus no instruments don't play anything outside there is massive deliverance happening separation from delays separation from delays bring them out thank you jesus delays you want to move forward but the spirit ties you down it's over right now no you can't budge it you are under an atmosphere there is an influence the influence of the spirit line by line the holy ghost is moving row by row there is no faking it line by line lord every row every line every individual let no one in this category escape it for the sake of your mercy and your grace no matter where you are inside and outside online don't worry the spirit of god is moving one by one it must catch up with you the word of the lord is upon it bring them out young old destinies that have been delayed tonight there is serious grace for deliverance those of you lifting up your hands be sensitive be sensitive we're in a prophetic atmosphere right now bring them i see people outside kai my god 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 many people many people many people many people there's someone you are following from kenya you are watching from a laptop the anointing your hands are shaking the spirit of the lord is upon you judging every darkness tonight you will be located by god you prayed it you must be free please help the ushers if there are too if there are too few protocol join them different departments help them the lord really wants to set people free it's a year of triumph don't think these people are just coming out for show they represent breakthroughs these are the people who god wants to give testimonies darkness raging over the lives of people they came from different places how will god leave them that way right now all of you in front here i decree and declare to those spirits at the count of three let them go you know my voice one two three go 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 out of their lives now out now i command you by the influence of the spirit i decree and declare let their destinies go delay broken now hallelujah now lift your hands my god you'll be surprised at what will happen now everyone say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus the grace for open doors right now break every chain in my life keep your hands lifted watch it happen now that's the instruction god gave me that grace breaking chains now i'm speaking across the congregation i have been seeing this for weeks padlocks opening in the realm of the spirit 
That's what the Lord is showing me. Padlocks opening, opening, opening right now. I open them. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow. Your influence is all over me. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Fire is coming on 32 people. And this fire that is coming upon them is to break family altars. I hear family altars right now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. I set those altars now on fire. Right now, 32 people. I see in the realm of the spirit. I command it right now. I command it. Everyone on this ground under the influence of any altar. Now, be free now. Help them please, help that lady. Be free now. Right now, be free now. Be free now. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your own. Everyone lift your hands. Say this after me in the name of Jesus. Please say it seriously. Say in the name of Jesus. Any spirit that has had access to my life and is causing destruction. Hear the word of the Lord. As I shout the name Jesus, I command you to live my life. At the count of three, shout Jesus. There will be an exiting of many strange spirits. One, two, three, shout it. I command spirits, you go now. You go now. You go now. You go now. Inside and outside. Any spirit resident within any man's life, any woman's life, causing pain. Help me say. Hallelujah. Ushers, I pray for grace for you in Jesus' name. Because what I see now is not a nice thing. The Lord is asking me that we shout Jesus. There are people who are going to vomit physical things. That's why I said it's a messy scene. I, I apologize. We're very neat and organized people inside and outside. But in the name of Jesus right now, any stranger in your body at the count of three must go out now. One, two, three. I command every stranger. Go now. Every poison. Every devil. Causing sicknesses. Every fibroid. Every devil. Every enchantment. Hallelujah. 
the Lord is showing me a vision of a lady if you're here I want you to come out I'm seeing your family doing something like a sacrifice and they are giving somebody everybody a substance like a drink something to take they gave everybody including you and you took it where is that person please if you're here I want you to come out quickly is a is a highly diabolic thing they gave everybody where are you come your deliverance comes now I'm under the shadow of your wings help me your influence is all over me Let's have another mic, please. Hold on. Stand up, my dear. Is this the lady? Two of them. Stand up. Where are you from? Look at me. Huh? Kogi State. State. What happened to you? Hold on. I converted. Hold on. I'm looking at you, Kai. This thing. You entered a covenant. Huh? Yes. With who? I don't know my mother. I don't know. They she brought somebody, and you people entered the covenant, and they gave you something. Hold my hands. Shout, Jesus. Jesus. I command that covenant, that demonic thing, time your life. In this miracle service, it lives now. In the name of Jesus. You too. Where are you from? I'm from Kogi State. You are from Kogi State. The same thing. Hold my hands. Look at me. I command that devil to leave you now whatever yoke please don't come out if I don't call your case are you part of them mr. man young man you're part of them in the name of Jesus I set you free bring the, your, you two. come make sure that so that we don't get the place rowdy be delivered now help her out be free now out I'm interested in this lady please stand up my dear if you can this lady's whole family is in bondage whole family the entire family nothing is working in your family the Lord wants to deliver you right now hold my hands I command that spirit your time is up leave this family now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I break the yoke over your life now out now There is a lady you have been coughing blood where are you you are coughing literally and blood is coming out there is a lady like that please where are you let's hurry up we have a lot to do this night the Lord is asking me to minister to a lady that coughs and then blood you cough blood who is that inside outside except you are under the anointing please come out quickly I want to pray for that person now where are you how long Hold on, just, just keep her. Where's the mic? How long? You? You are an usher? You? How long? Three weeks. Eh? Three weeks. For three weeks you've been caught. Lay your hand on your chest. You too. Lay your hands on your chest. You too. Huh? Substance. Your what? Hold on, please. Guys, hold on. Yours is what? The substance you spoke about. What substance? lift and your hands question. lift your hands lift both of them I'm seeing an angel pouring something on your hand your hand will start shaking and then the Lord is bringing you strange deliverance it will start from your hands down to your body I place the word of God upon your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ both of you look at me both of you cough out blood in the name of Jesus I lay my hands upon you it ends now in the name of Jesus out right now there are spirits responsible for this kite ta, 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 ta. do you know what I just saw the Lord opened my eyes and I saw like a cage and in the cage I saw snakes that's all I'm seeing that's all I'm seeing lift your hands everybody the Lord is just asking me to wave my hands over the congregation there are people who represent that oppression it will leave now the Lord is asking me to wave my hands. Lord, as you have said, I see snakes in cages. 
whose destiny is that right now whose destiny is that i wave my hands in the name of jesus please release them for your glory release them now help them please jesus christ inside outside be out of that cage now i see snakes serpents some of you see them in your dreams they must go now they are leaving you now now they are leaving you now i command liberty 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 hallelujah i'm hearing a name jane jane like j-a-n-e jane 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 i'm also hearing another name victory is it victory like victory victory please don't come out if that's not your name what's your name jane your name is victory where are you from Delta State. Delta State. I have to pray for you. Your family is being seriously oppressed. Why are you people here? You are all Jane. Jane, your name is Victory. I want to pray for you. Kaza Chat. Kaza Chat. Is it Kaza Chat? Who is that? Kaza Chat. I'm hearing that name. That's that's like a Kaduna name. Kaza Chat. Please, who is that? The breakthrough of your family has come. Kaza Chat. Is it? I don't know why God is going to Kaduna now. Nom. Is it Nom Shu or Nom Shu or something like that? I don't know if there's a name like that. Nom, nom Shu or something like that. Nom something. Please, if that is your name, you are why are they here I call their names I'm going to lay hands on you except for you I don't even know why the rest of you are but please I want you to believe the moment I lay my hands on you something will happen the Lord is saying I should start with you Lord open her door now in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands reproach leaves your life now in the name of Jesus Christ Reproach lives your life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Reproach lives your life now. Reproach lives your life now. Hold my hands. Call your parents and tell them the Lord is giving them breakthrough. Your family, your entire family, Delta State, breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. The serious witchcraft over your life hold my hands Lord the Lord is asking me to walk with you this is how your destiny is opening up that's what the Lord is asking me to do walk with you to walk with you something is happening it's a prophetic act you will not help her to walk with you opens in the name of Jesus your destiny opens up now in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands this girl lift your hands where you are i'm seeing wind around you and the lord is that wind is going anti-clockwise anti-clockwise and the lord said is restoration i stretch my hands upon you right now i release that grace for restoration restoration there are seven other people who will tap from this anointing this same anointing right now seven seven right now the anointing for restoration is coming upon them. Receive it right now, wherever you are. Zabata kata la kata frate kese brende gata. Lekate pras kata barato shubre diara. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside. It's like you came here with your daughter or something. I'm seeing a woman sit down with her daughter outside. Now that's all I'm giving about you. Please, if you can find that woman and if you understand what I've said, I want you to run and come. I want to pray for the sick now, but God is delivering people.
God is delivering people. Seth. Seth. Who is Seth? S-E-T-H. S-E-T-H. Your name is Seth. 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 The Lord is stepping into his life right now. Seth. Is there someone with that name? Seth. Have you found the mama I'm talking about? Don't worry, let them come. Let them come. Doesn't matter. With your daughter. Mama. Kai. There is the spirit of death on your family. I'm going to pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not a prophet of doom. You came from where, mama? from Edo State. From Edo State? Yes, but I'm living in Wusasa. You live in Wusasa? Yes. But you came from Edo State. Yes. I must pray for you. There, why is he here? Who is this gentleman? Seth. You too? You are an usher? Okay. Kai, this is not the set I'm seeing. No, I will pray for you. But I'm seeing someone else. Eh? Please don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. Huh? Because I'm seeing an accident killing you. And you took what's the name of this thing they take? We we and you were high. You were about to cross the road. And then I'm seeing a truck with the name Angote on it, just running and killing you. There is somebody here. You smoke. Please don't be. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's not like you are not a serious person but this thing you started taking it from when you were small and it's destroying your life you want to be free but you can't leave it please don't be ashamed come out now quickly please if you are still thinking about it remain on your seat some you have to be free now come out i'm seeing one you wore jeans dress like your shirt i don't know if it's your shirt is jeans who is that no no there, there's another come out i will pray for you this this is not the only guy just keep them here i will pray for him i'm seeing another person outside the second overflow you are standing on the road the spirit of god is speaking to you speaking to you this thing they roll and they smoke and then you even i'm seeing you swallowing a drug i don't know what drug is that please come out come out clap for them as they come out join them quickly and come whether i mention your case or not you are involved in any kind of liquor and addiction indian hem whatever forward march come here your salvation come sir please appreciate them clap for them some of them are not bad people it's a spirit don't be ashamed please usher uh, direct them so that they come here i'm seeing up to five ladies in this group up to five ladies come don't be ashamed don't let anyone laugh at you please this is a miracle service join them we oui, we oui. codeine whatever it is join them whether you know the name of what you are smoking or swallowing or not come and join them please quickly that addiction must be broken now who can stand against the lord no one can Coming, the devil is a liar. Who can stand against our king? No one can. I'm seeing a very small boy very small boy very small boy who is supposed to join them young man please hold on please if the parents of the boy are here don't flog him please this is a very small boy you will not even know that this boy is wise to smoke this thing he saw an elderly person smoking it come out there is a small boy here I know what drag him out come where is the boy come out please gentlemen i'm going to pray for you don't worry you are not bad people 
I'm seeing a number of ladies, up to five ladies. They are refusing to come out. There's nothing to be embarrassed. Jesus Christ wants to set you free. This is a miracle service. It's not like you have evil people. That's not what we are saying. It's a spirit. You don't stop by counseling. Mama, there is a spirit of death over your family. And I will pray for you. I will pray for you in the name of Jesus. Who is this? Your daughter. What's your name, my dear? Lillian. Hold on. Is this mic working? Can you add Lillian, the voice? Lillian. Lillian. What do you want God to do for you? I want God to heal you. What's wrong with you? No, no, no. You had a dream. Huh? You saw a snake. You can't even remember it. And from that day, you started having serious problem with your stomach. Huh? What's wrong with you? I've, I've, I've got a test. And, 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 and they told me that it's a, a liver problem. Liver problem? Yes, sir. Because I look at you and you would think you are pregnant. But you are not pregnant. Your stomach is swelling up. Mama, is that true? How long has it been? It's, it's out of three years now. Look at, look at, look at evil and wickedness. Are you married? Because you see now, assuming a brother has been trusting God to marry this sister. Do you think the brother will marry her? Please help me. Do you think he will marry her? You look at her now. And you think she's five or six months pregnant, but she's not pregnant. Kai. There is a lady who has refused to come out. The power of God is going to come upon her outside. You are supposed to be part of those who will be delivered here. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord outside. That lady, you were a sincere lady, but I, I don't know if it's um, another lady. I don't want to say what I'm seeing not to embarrass you because the, what you were introduced to is not only smoking this there are other things that I see that I may not be able to talk about I'm, I'm asking you to come out God wants you to be free for the sake of your family the power of God is going to come upon you outside outside to be free of this thing my dear look at me this is koinonia the Lord is going to set you free you believe in miracles Mama, you believe in miracles. Yes, I have to pray for you. Money runs away from you. Huh? Madam, I will pray for you. Mama? Yes. Yamuke, do you hear how, sir? Yes, yes. Okay. This is your daughter. Please be comfortable. Whatever language you can speak, there is an interpreter here. Nobody says you must be able to speak English or whatever. Any language, please. If I call you here or you stand here for healing, don't be under any pressure to say you must whatever language is comfortable speak it if i don't understand we'll find somebody to interpret please don't put yourself under pressure and say no we are excellent people but we are not fools we can't put anyone under pressure hallelujah mommy i want to pray for you because i'm seeing the lord bringing restoration to your life this is what i am seeing and the Lord is asking me to pray for you. Can I pray for you, ma'am? I will pray for you. Ah. I have to pray. I'm seeing, not you, but I'm seeing somebody close to you having an accident. Traveling to Abuja and having an accident. We have to pray. I'm not saying it will happen. Once God reveals it is broken. Lord Jesus, stretch your hands and let's pray for this mommy. You don't have to know her. Please stretch your hands and pray. Lord, we avert death. We avert death now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we avert death by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mama. Is there a name like Gracilda? Is it Gracilda or Gracilda? Gracilda or Gracilda, something like that. Gracilda, Gracilda, something like that. If that sounds like your name, I'm sorry if I don't mention it well. The Lord kept mentioning it in my ears. Gracilda or Gracilda, something like that. If that is your name, please come on. Eh? Jacinta. No. 
but come. Where are you coming from? Zaria. Zaria, I have to pray for you. There's a gentleman who will destroy you. Be free now from every influence. Hold my hand. Anybody that is not designed by God, I separate you and him forever. Say amen. In Jesus' name. Gracilda. Gracilda. I'm hearing Gracilda. Something Hilda. Please. If it's not you, no problem. But that's what I'm hearing. Mama, let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. New beginning for you. Hold up, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, lay your hands on your stomach. Kai. Lord Jesus, you gathered people here tonight to set them free. I cause the spirit responsible for this. I decree and declare that this stomach will shrink. Every devil will go away in the name of Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Look at me and you will never be barren in your life. Say amen. There are two ladies, you are inside here. There is an embargo of barrenness on your family. Fire is coming on those two ladies now to break that embargo. You don't even know. It's in your family, it may not be in your life. But I'm seeing it right now. The angel of the Lord is locating two ladies right now and is breaking that embargo. Thank you, Father. I put the word of God upon this prophetic word. That embargo is broken right now right now right now two ladies two ladies there's no reason why you should come here and your life should be the same mama i will pray for you this is your daughter do you know that god is going to use this girl god will use your daughter for his glory hold my hands my dear there's a small girl now but god will use you in the name of jesus christ I anoint you mama I decree and declare let hardship live your life in the name of Jesus Christ let hardship live your life in the name of Jesus hold on I'm seeing a wind and the Lord is asking me to follow it this is somebody's deliverance here this is somebody's deliverance here this is somebody's deliverance here. This is somebody's deliverance. The power of God is coming upon a few people as I'm walking across this place. This is somebody's deliverance. This is somebody's deliverance. Lord, set them free right now. Right now. Right now. I'm seeing something rolling around this row. This row. This row. This row. Shala sobariatas kabandabria. There's no hiding. There's no hiding. Someone in this row. Someone in this row. Someone in this row. Hardship over your family is being broken right now. I'm stretching my hands. This row. Right there. Father, locate that person right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, come. I want you to rejoice. Look at me. The Lord, hold on. The Lord is saying I should tell you that where you have been crying, you will begin to laugh. You have been crying for 30 years and the Lord is saying your breakthrough has come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please shake for me. Come, madam. Hold my hands. The Lord is there and should tell you it's your season of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your season of laughter. Your season of laughter. Look at me. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her hands be loose. Your hands are tied. I lose your hands in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors. That's what the Lord is saying. Open doors. The Lord has said you have waited too long. 
it's time for the door of your destiny to be open open doors come there is a spirit in your life that makes bad boys look for you hold my hands leave her now out out when bad boys see you they can't leave you as they are passing they see you that spirit calls them back i don't know who this girl is you are a small girl but the things you know are what you have done out now in the name of jesus you have gone to places you should not go you have you have the phone numbers of people that if we know now i'm not saying you're a bad girl it's a spirit including married men they will be minding their business that spirit will call them to you i command that devil to leave you now leave you now in the name of jesus christ i want us to pray for these gentlemen before we pray for the sick you see let me tell you something addiction is a very wicked spirit don't look at them especially our dear sisters my brother what happened to you eh? gone short gone short yes, sir. who shot you i'm a soldier i was shot by my body Meduguri. you are meduguri yes sir no he wanted to kill you eh? but he didn't kill you he was directed to kill you Hi. you are a soldier how long has this been it's going to seven months now seven months which where did they shoot your legs and you can't walk with it look at me you believe in miracles lift your crutch lift it lift it come come lift your legs go ahead you're a soldier lift your legs look at this come on koinonia look at this lift your crotch up look at this look at this look at this walk as fast as you can don't be afraid turn around turn around come because your wound is not healing there is a wound but there is not healing from today I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord who has perfected his leg will also perfect you where are you now you are in Zaria you are still in the force yes you are still in the force huh? yes sir. I want to pray for you do you believe God can favor yes sir I have to pray for you God is going to connect you with a senior person and he will lift you huh? look at me brothers and sisters i want to break this addiction from your life now are we together you are very sincere people some of you were initiated into this thing by bad friends some of you were initiated into these things by spirit i'm going to lay my hands on you while the congregation whether your child is here or not whether your brother is here or not as you are praying you are sowing a seed for your own home are you hearing what i'm saying stretch your hand don't look at anybody's face and run your mouth on any it's none of your business koinonia is a, it's like a hospital stretch your hands i will lay my hands on every one of them please all of you should pray i want to break addiction from your life don't feel condemned jesus will help you it must be broken right now broken right now broken right now any kind of addiction out out now out out in the name of jesus out look at this guy out break from his life now in the mighty name of jesus christ be set free be set free as soon as i lay my hands on you continue praying be set free addiction break break in the name of jesus hold my hands darling no addiction for liquor no addiction for drugs something is leaving you i'm seeing something like an arrow coming out of your head out of her life now in the name of jesus I break that addiction. Ah. Hey Jimmy, come. The Lord is saying you should pray for this guy. 
He will pray for you. This guy needs serious prayer. Just lay your hands on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Out! Out! Now! I command that devil. This is somebody that loves God, but this addiction must be broken right now. I break it right now. I break it right now. Hold my hands. You are a nice lady, but we have to break this thing. Lord, please, for your mercy, let it be broken in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to somebody. I'm seeing a very interesting case. You love God. Please don't be ashamed. There is a particular pain reliever you are addicted to. Who is that person? I want to pray for you now. Whether you are sick or not. Come and stand here. Particular pain reliever. You can't help it. You can wake up 1 a.m. in the night and swallow it. It's a spirit. Pain reliever. I'm not saying you are sick and they gave you in the hospital. God is visiting addictions this night. Quickly come. Don't sit back and say I'm all right. Allow God set you free. Let them come. Look at this. Pain. I don't know what it is, but I hear my spirit pain reliever. Whether you are sick, whether you are fine, the urge will hook you and you have to go and get it. If you, you can prefer to take it than to eat food, it must go right now. That's why God put this meeting to help people. There's one of you, fire is coming on you now. After that fire comes on you, then I'll pray for the rest. That's the instruction God is giving me. One of you, fire, literal fire, is coming upon you from heaven. As I lay my hands upon you, that addiction breaks right now. Stretch your hands and pray for them. Don't feel embarrassed. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus. Addiction broken now. Broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Broken now. Broken right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Broken now. Broken now. If you have for prayers, just move them forward. Broken now in the name of Jesus. Broken now in the name of Jesus. Broken now in the name of Jesus. It's broken now in the name of Jesus. Broken in the name of Jesus. Place your hand on your stomach. God is not only setting you free, He's setting you free from something else. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Addiction broken now. Addiction broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Addiction is broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. Broken now. Hold my hands. Let her go in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a spirit that wants to destroy your life. I command now, there's no hiding place for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you must be set free. You are standing in for somebody, no problem. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural freedom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, praise the Lord. Please accept you are nursing a child or doing something. Let's all rise. Those outside, they are still praying for you, no problem. All other people, please stand up. Rise up, I want us to pray. If you are yet to submit your prayer request, please do it quickly. The Bible says, Unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come. In one minute, God can turn your life around.
everyone stretch your hands here and pray i'm going to lay hands on the request pray passionately from the depth of your heart lord i will not have to write this again pray i've written it the bible says after two days please if there are still people coming bring it quickly it says after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up online here please pray i'm laying my hands on this request and we're asking the god of heaven visit men and women are you praying now pray in the next one minute i'd like you to pray blast in tongues and say lord this is the last of the prayer request that i'm having to write concerning this issue hallelujah agree with me with a loud amen in the name of jesus christ I decree and I declare over every request gathered from this nation and from the nations of the earth online and here in our local environment Jesus I present to you impossible situations according to men and I ask you turn it around now turn it around now Turn it around now. Let every breakthrough request here be turned into a testimony now. Every case here said by men to be impossible. We, we collide that case with the power of God and we produce testimonies now. Whoever must die for this prayer to be answered dies now. Whoever must live for this prayer to be answered lives now. Whoever must rise for this prayer to be answered rises now. Whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered goes down now. Whoever must hear God for this prayer to be answered, hears God now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, may your people not have to write this again. Agree with me, may your people not have to write this again. Lord, I pray that before miracle service april let every request here be turned into a testimony may the fire and the anointing of the holy ghost that makes all the difference let it rest on this request the same way fire fell from heaven to consume the sacrifice of Elijah may fire fall on this now it has been prayed for you will not write it again it has been prayed for you will not write it again in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift up your hands everyone hallelujah listen we're in a very strange season of the manifestation first of the spirit of revelation listen carefully there is a very spectacular outpouring God wants to upgrade the work of his people to access the mysteries of the kingdom not just to know him God wants to equip us with mysteries are we together number two there is a strange outpouring of the supernatural power of god for performance 
for performance not just that you had god and it never happens not just that you speak and it never happens number three this is personal to us as a family of faith god has declared that is a year of triumph i want you to believe this word oh believe it otherwise you will sit down and you will watch people rise from nothing and then you will keep clapping i'd like you to insist we still have a few minutes for this meeting to be done tonight insist that if you have never stood upon this altar to testify make up your mind and say no god i must stand before your people are you hearing what i'm saying as i speak over your life now among the many things i want to speak right now i want to activate upon your life the grace and the unction for performance many of you may not know what this anointing is listen carefully lift your hands he said who has ever heard that a city was built in one day but as soon as zion travels there is a grace that is coming upon the people of god hear me for performance he said blessed is she that believes for unto her not unto them mm -mm, mm -mm. this is not a corporate thing unto her there shall be there are many things god has said that has not come to pass there is a grace that engenders performance i prophesy to you now in the name of the lord god who called me and sent me may that unction that will make results appear speedily let it come upon you like fire now let it come upon you like fire now receive it now is yours receive it now is yours receive it now is yours performance 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 shake it la bata la prete get the soto ropa shiata grace for performance everything hanging in the realm of the spirit that is already your portion released by god i decree within the next 30 days it appears physically now i prophesy the spirit of the lord is upon me i speak within the next 30 days it manifests in the name of jesus whatever has slowed down your pace in life so that you are not moving at the pace designed by god i put fire upon your feet and i command speed now i put fire upon your feet i command strength speed strength speed strength speed anything that has not yet worked in your life i don't know why but i'm prophesying i'm speaking to it start working now many of you don't understand what i'm doing to you start working now i don't know what projects you are currently on that has refused to produce i force it to bear fruit now I force it to bear fruit now. Hear me. The Lord spoke to my spirit and told me that the month of April for Koinonia, you may not believe it, but for Koinonia and everyone connected to this grace, the Lord said we will see a strange dimension of wealth and manifestation write this down brothers and sisters 
is the word of the lord i think i was telling you yesterday that the lord told me this you will see people that know nothing about money rise in a way that they themselves are asking what happened listen except the lord has not sent me i declare you must be part of the testifiers don't say i'm too small receive it don't be foolish in the name of jesus you must be a participant listen i tell you brothers and sisters please write this down you will see a strange rising rising write this down you will say i said it nothing to some i mean mysteriously people will have to ask what is happening it is a grace there is a grace that makes it happen i'm not talking of business i'm talking about the suffering word of god upon the life of a man may it be your portion in the name of jesus i decree upon you the kind of favor that will make even your enemies to say there is god in your life i release that dimension of favor now listen you can't rise in this kingdom without the favor of god you will struggle for nothing please hear me i prophesy it again whoever is lacking favor on his life i decree from this night carry favor inside outside everywhere online carry favor let me prophesy over finances whatever makes money run away from you don't say i'm talking about money you need it for what is coming in ahead whatever makes finances run from you whatever dug a hole in your life that makes you suffer in misery and penury i turn it around now i turn it around now I pray for every student here the kind of results you have never seen I release it to you now I release it by the Spirit I release it from the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ anyone due for promotion here or anyone's family member rightfully due for promotion and either because of religious sentiments or because of ethno tribal sentiments they have trampled upon you i decree and declare may the angel of god responsible for lifting visit your destiny and ensure that your promotion must manifest I pray for your loved ones. I pray for you. Whoever is called jobless here, yeah, before next miracle service, get something doing now. I prophesy it again. Whoever is called jobless before next miracle service, I don't know how it will happen, but get a good job. There are people here trusting God for direction. Very clear direction for the next level of their lives. Could be maritally, could be geographic location, whatever it is. Hear God in this season like never before. Hear God in this season like never before. Lift your hands. I release upon you the grace for supernatural miracles receive it right now receive it right now sapoto so receive it right now
from tonight i declare whoever you speak over and command their destinies to open may my god honor it i said may my god honor it whoever fights you goes down immediately whoever fights you goes down immediately hear me whoever mocks your passion for god goes down immediately whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise may his prayer be answered whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise in koinonia tonight may their prayers be answered every embargo of bad luck upon your face that makes your helpers look at you and turn aside i tear that fail completely in the name of jesus favor like never before testimonies like never before koinonia is the place of the anointing koinonia is the place of unction i pray for you a new a fresh grace and anointing let it rest upon you like the dew of heaven begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit i'm praying it again begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit begin to flow effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit the mantle of honor that god has put upon my life god has put upon this ministry you are part of this vision you are under this grace there's no reason why it should not work in your life i command it to start speaking now no more dishonor in your life no more dishonor in your life hear me for those who have been trying certain things for a long time whether it's exams whether it's admission whatever you have been doing again business i don't care i don't know where the embargo came from but i break it right now from today any man that looks upon you may god cause them to bless you whatever has killed your prayer life this night I release upon you the spirit of prayer and supplication listen see let me tell you something don't ever let people there are people who are under such passion for new things the system of the kingdom is dynamic but the foundations of the things that make men grow are the same prayer the word corporate fellowship obedience if you leave any of these things and you say you are looking for power or looking for anointing is a joke you will never find it one more time i restore your prayer life in the name of jesus christ i don't know what killed your passion for the word your passion for bible study your passion for devotion your passion for the things of god but i command the restoration this night I don't know what took away your passion for the house of God but in the name of Jesus may a love for the house of God like never before come upon you in the name of Jesus the grace God released to bring the word triumph to come to pass in this ministry may that grace speak over you I speak over your life it is your year of triumph therefore whatever has mocked God in your life I command that in as you enter April from tomorrow you triumph over it hallelujah as you enter April it will not be April fool it will be April wise 
it will be April breakthrough it will be April miracles it will be April speed agree with me again I'm praying with you between now and miracle service April please hear me results together with tears in your eyes for joy you will return with them results together with tears of joy in your eyes wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise wave your hands and give Jesus praise thank you Lord for performance thank you Lord for performance in the name of Jesus Christ dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salman and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye